Good evening everyone, the Valley kicked off their Premier A debut in style tonight. We can see if they can get the job done away from home. They face an MCC side who will be after an immediate response after opening day defeat. And there's a, a mix of youthful exuberance and experience across the green tonight. Let's call the action alongside me is Lloyd Yaccarino on paper Lloyd. Looks to shape up as a fascinating contest mate, welcome. Thank you, Sammy. Uh, youthful exuberance and experience in the commentary box. As That's well, right. You say. It's Which a, way? Uh, well, I'll let you work we'll that the viewers, out. We'll let the viewers <laughs> make that call. No, look, this is uh, a massive game, isn't it, really? You know, the season here is going to come around pretty quick with 14 rounds instead of 18 rounds. So this game could be very important for one of these sides. Correct. So... We'll take a look at tonight's matchups. It's uh, going to be a cracking contest for the home side. MCC, Tris Dolan leading up. Stephen Moore playing two. Dave Hero third. And Ash Rowan, who's across from Mentone this season, will be skipping. Meanwhile, for the Valley, we've got former under-18 state pairs champs, Riley Boxall and Jack Thompson. Brad Gibson, who ended up skipping last season in Valley's finals winning campaign, is playing three. And Nathan Lynch, who started round one with a big rink win. We'll touch on that a bit later. He'll be skipping for the Valley tonight. And I think Triss is about to kick off the action, uh, Sammy. Yep. And uh, back Triss, good Brighton Blue Devil VBL player, just to put a resting toucher in to start. Of course, stream tonight. Brought to you, as always, by... The Wyoming Bowls Club and on board for season 23-24, Lloyd. Dan and on club, an absolutely great facility. Been down there for the VBL qualifying as well as the VBL 2 itself. Yeah, two uh, powerhouse venues in bowls, not only in Victoria, but all across Australia. Uh, very lucky to have them as supporters, not only of Bowls Victoria and the live stream, but the sport, Sammy. Correct. Green looks like it's running at a nice pace, I'd say. Typically, as the night goes, we expect it to slow down, but I'm expecting the highest quality of standard for the first 10 ends. Yeah, it's been a beautiful day in Melbourne, around 20 or so degrees. No real wind to speak of here either at MCC, mate, so expecting a high-quality game. So who's your prediction for this one, Sammy, please? Yeah, good question, mate. I think in the tip, you know, I've tipped the valley, but... Um, Performance after round one would suggest I don't really have any idea. <laughs> I could have told to you what's that going to happen. <laughs> so I think either way we're in for a close contest. We'll touch on the other rinks as the night goes on because there's an absolute abundance of quality as we look across. We've got Michael Sims down for his first game this season, obviously with the Valley last year. He's playing three tonight, Lloyd. That's yeah. a luxury. Well, it's noticeable. Obviously, uh, I did do the commentary for Division 1 final last year, and Simsy and, of course, the third in this rink, um, Sticks, were both skipping, So, as you mentioned before. So, clearly, they've strengthened up this year. This is Jack Thompson here looking to draw this one off on his forehand just on the high side of things, but nice speed to open up account. Super on the mat here. Uh, last year played at Moorabbin. Uh, was a coach there for a number of years. This year he's now obviously made the move to MCC to get back into the Premier Division game. 
but knows the Mentone boys very well, playing there for a number of years as well. So he's a, a luxury too. I think we'll see all of his skill on display today. Played it well, probably got the shot there. Tom, Jack Thompson, good weight with his first one. Just need a correction on line, which is done, but just aiming through for, for speed. So, MCC holding one early one. days. Yeah. And Dave Hero walking back to the Matt Lloyd. Played second last week, so Russ Green was playing third in this great rink last week. He's gone back to play two on the ring next door for Scotty Mortimer and Dave moving up to third, mate. Yeah, I quite like it. No, so I, mean, I think what we know about Mooney Valley is that probably more than any side that I've seen in Victorian pennant, they, they, they really love each other and they get a, a, around each other and they're such a good team. You know, there's a connection between these these second, third and skip and of course Trist at the front that I think is quite smart. And just saying through, live across Facebook and YouTube this evening, so jump in the comments, let us know your predictions for this round two clash. Brad Marin joining us in the comments already. Taking out the Mima pairs earlier this week, Lloyd. Yeah, what a, a win. Huge effort. Great tournament, that one, wasn't it? Really? Couple of local Victorians, good to see. Jeff Stewart after the green speed, saying it looks pretty reasonable. What do you reckon, Lloyd? 15, 14 and a half, 15? Oh, it'd have to be somewhere near 14 or yep. 15, wouldn't it? I mean, we know it's going to drop in temperature, but I must admit uh, the, the grounds crew here at MCC have done a fantastic job. It looks perfect, doesn't it, Sammy? Surely does, and sticks he's very good with his first. Brad Gibson. Close for shot, if not a good second. Something to work off, isn't it, Sammy? It really is, well. yep. Dave's got to be really careful to kind of be particular with his line just to avoid that bow. So sticks very handy position there for Mini Valley. Saying that, here comes Dave. Absolute front toucher, a little <laughs> touch of the jack. I always say if you play the right line and the right weight, there's never really much danger, is there? No. Alrighty, Brad Gibson looking for... Probably two foot or so to give himself a chance to land that last bowl or tuck the jack around the corner here. Well, I'll tell you what, in the run it looks exciting. Sam. Just needs to get up there a bit quicker, I think, Lloyd. Yeah. He's just going to duck away. Well, he did pick that Probably up. Probably had okay speed for that. Mm, yeah. Just missed the line. Michael Wilkes reckons MCC by a margin tonight. Oh. Confident they've got plenty of old school quality. So he says, I wonder if <laughs> <laughs> I might. I love that. Good to, good to hear you uh, on the live stream, Wilkes. That's a... Look, I mean, it, the, moon, the the MCC side it has got stars. You know, I know they lost 18 points last week, but I think it's a talented side as well. So who knows what they're going to produce today in return. Very important game because you don't want to start your season off 2-0 two, two down, do you? And the confidence might just drop off because I think the skill's there across yeah, all sides. Correct. Big shot, Kane Nelson drawing a toucher on the opening bowl on the ring next door. Yeah, spoke to a couple of Queensland guys earlier in the season. They said the Nelson boys won't come down until they get the call from Mooney Valley and now they're here. Well, one of them's here as well. So yep. He's a gun. See, I think bronze at the Australian Champion Champs just been. Queensland player of the series at Ali Shield. That's a sort of ridiculous effort in itself. That's a ridiculous a effort. Quality that side, so <laughs> it probably shows us how good he's going and Nathan Lynch is just on the high side. Oh, I think it's speed it, that shot. We can say Lynch is he's, he's going to be around the area all day. I love the way he plays the game. He's, he's fun, but he just gives himself a chance every bowl. Here comes Ash, of course. Sammy, you might not remember, but Ash is... I remember Ash early days from Clayton, where I think he won a, a couple of Premier League titles from Clayton many, many years ago, so he's uh, been around for a very, very long time, has that? All right, no, he's definitely giving himself a chance with the speed. I think he needs to hold on to this ball. It's going to crash. Oh, it's unfortunate. Although it probably was, didn't do any damage because yeah, that was... Yeah, it was uh, into Brad yeah. Sticks's... Uh, Brad Sticks's ball. Brad Gibson's <laughs> ball. <laughs> it's actually nudged the jack, so... 
They'll measure for the second tier on the opening end. So we talk a little bit about this green if I can, Sammy. I don't know how many times you've played at MCC, but um, this side towards uh, the camera, what you're seeing closest to us, that is typically the tighter side, with the other side being a little bit wider, a little bit hoopier. So with the steel conditions, it'll be interesting to see who decides to take which advantage. Yep. That. Keep on that as the night progresses. Keep a close eye on that. So it was two shots on the opening end to MCC. They open their account this evening. Any surprises for you last week in round one of Metro Pennant, Sammy? Um, I don't know if there's any surprises as such, given it was so hard to pick, I mm. thought, initially, Lloyd. I don't know those upsets in, in... To be honest, I think we thought Deer Park would be pretty hard to beat, and they proved that on the stream game on the Friday night. And then every other game went, I mean, pretty much down to the wire. Mm. Not, a, not a lot in either of the other games, so... Hopefully we'll find out a bit more, maybe where each team sits after round two. Mm. And after tonight, whether Valley can remain undefeated, or as you, can, as you said, MCC can bounce back. Yeah, I think um, this season, you talk about sides improving kind of 100%. I reckon every side in Premier has improved 200%. Every time you try and pick someone who's going to struggle, you have a look at a superstar in their lineup and think, I'm not sure if that's accurate, so... It's going to be a really exciting season, and round two, why wouldn't you want to be here on a Friday night, Sammy? There's absolutely fantastic weather for it as well, Lloyd. Good little crowd, plenty of support for the Valley over there in that far corner, and just to the left of us here in the commentary box. Mm. Always well supported. They love it, don't they, the Valley? Yep. And I love them too. They bring so much <laughs> energy. Feelings mutual. <laughs> I think Riley initially didn't love this one out the hand. Not too far away though. He's nailed the line twice there early on. Yeah, well I think the uh, the connection in the front end and being pairs champions in under 18 level, they'll work, they clearly do work well together. So they'll certainly bring the challenge I think for most of the game. See how Triss and, uh, and Super can combat that connection between the two front end players. We talk about them being a team. A, uh, and a four, I think, was picked up on one of the rinks over there. Yeah, um, missed that. Hot start a little early on yeah. for Dale Jones over there. Dale Jones. There you go. DJ. Would you say he's rocked the first end, would you, maybe, Sammy? For the first end, yes. <laughs> no, we didn't miss it, so I'm not sure if there was maybe an unfortunate result or... No, no, no. A little noise made. What was it? Good shot there by Jack Thompson. Touching the jack down the line. Both those that front white bowl and Riley's back on about a foot off it. Yeah, they've got a little insight on that there that I think we're still holding the, the shot is the back bowl from Valley, but it's very close now. Uh, spoke last end of Sticks' bowl being that mat length in front of the jack. Well, this time I think MCC have two bowls that are going to be in dangerous position, so this time Jack's going to have to be very careful with his line. First bowl on, I think we've seen on the... Uh, the other side. See how he goes. Just needs a bit of navigation either side of Riley's bowl here. Oh, Read yeah. it in behind the jack. Said Any options. Very good. Lynch, he didn't. He said he was happy with that. Yep. Never get the shot too early, they say in the classics, don't they, Sammy? Talking about getting the shot next door, Russell Green Jr. playing second for Scott Mortimer. <laughs> who, mind you, only lost two rinks last season as it was the leading skip in Premier League, and he's got Russ Green Jr. playing two for him and drawing side touches on the second end already. So it's going to be a good tussle on the rink next door to us. Yeah, I mean, there's there's talent galore there. You've got Simsy playing third, coming after Russell, who's probably going to get him close. And on cue, Simsy's having a drive at Russell's close bowls. And we're killing it. Kills it. <laughs> on cue. So, 
Dave Harrow just crashing there. Sarah Roger jumping in. Great to see Trish on the, on the stream. Lloyd, integral part of Victoria's winning Marge Morris trophy. First time in 19 years the girls brought it home. A super effort. Getting up here tonight. Yeah, it's, um, you know, Tris, you know, it's obviously the only female bowler out there on the green. Has such a decorated resume of achievements and probably in the last five years has been one of the most c consistent bowlers in Victoria with her performance. So it's great to see her on the live stream playing a bit of a different role as well in the front. We've seen yeah, that's it. A end. lot of the back end. Yep, yeah. yep. Of course, she's getting married at the end of the year, Sammy. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah. How about that? To Scott. He loves bowls. Sammy, a bit of um, a bit of glare coming across the green, a little bit of shadow creeping across. How's that going to affect the players out there in terms of early days of this game? Yeah, it makes it tricky just for the next sort of, what are we saying, half hour of the game. It's nearly tucked in behind there. More concerned about our eyes in the commentary box <laughs> for the meantime. No, I think there's enough experience to have played in sort of conditions like this before. Craig Gibson just going through his first, looking to correct oh, his so way. Looks delightful. Clear run, and that's going to be the shot. Wow, he gets in behind the jack as well. That makes it super tough now for Ash Rowan. Friday night bowls, so that's what that is about. Drawing we shots like that. Like that. Oh. We spoke about a little bit more turn on that wider side. Played the perfect speed and just let it come back to the yep. jack. Always good to settle the nerves, isn't it? Early days with, with the draw game. You know, I think yeah, early ends, you want to just get your rhythm going. Correct. Nailing one like that just gets you up for the game. So I think, watch watch him uh, stick now for the rest of the game, Sammy. I reckon he might be one to just keep an eye on. Yeah, as we touched on earlier, ended up skipping Valley's finals campaign last season. So they obviously trust him to do, to do the job and he's playing for third tonight. I think Ashraw is just trying to draw this off as close as possible. Get a close second here, Lloyd. Wow, he's it's very not close. terrible. Oh, it's a great effort. Oh, it's a good shot. It's got a good second either way. So about a bowl and a half in front of Jack. And I think that's probably what's going to excite Ash most about that, just widening up that target a little bit more. Yep. Can there be an angle now through that pink to the shot bowl without that Jack movement, which is probably it's indifferent. Yeah, so. yep. See, Nathan Tron... Draw as close as he can here on the back end, but yeah. I don't think anything on the high side is the worst thing in the world here. If Ash plays over his last over the jack, I'm just not sure how he's gone for weight. Just going to crash into the front, so... I think he picked it exactly yeah. right, Sammy. I think that's what he was trying to do, was finish on that high side and, and leave it in a good good area for the response from Ash. So, good call from you, Sammy, early. It's uh, very exciting to hear you saying All right, well, like give that. me a good call of your own here. What's Ash going to do with his second here? Because there's not a lot happening on the front, I don't think. Yeah, well, look, I, I think he's going to try and play through the pink. Uh, question of how much weight will he play, whether he's going to look on that wide bowl there, uh, the, the Mooney Valley wide bowl and try and come off it, or whether he thinks there's a port there through the pink onto the shot bowl. So I'm expecting a little bit of weight. Wait, would you agree with that? Yep. Let's see what he chooses to play. So as you said, shape up forehand. Going to drift across. I think the weight was pretty nice for it as well. Yeah, I think it's, it is probably typical with that hand. And we'll see it as the night goes on. If you are outside the line of fraction, there is a bit of a hold. And of course, if you're under, it can scoot across. So. Yep. And she had a bit of a jog on this, Sammy. Yeah, initially I thought he was a better track to his last. Just lucking Wade, but good shot there by Brad Gibson and gets the Valleys on the board here for the night and for the first time Riley Boxall grabbed the mat. 
And what's he saying? He's saying, what are we going to do here, boys? He says, oh, look, I'll be shorter, maybe. Yeah, yeah sometimes... No. I don't know if there was a preconceived game plan there or not, or whether they... I've had a chat about it. I always put the mat down. So I guess, what was that chat? Off the tape. About I think just to do with just jack length at the moment, mate. Oh, big shot by Dylan Fisher. A couple rings across. Lloyd turning up all out. Yeah, it's um, going to be hard to uh, hold a shot, I think, today. Yeah. Mm. Pretty keen to get on the board after dropping a four on the opening end. So it is a little bit longer, I think that's fair to say. I think maybe the, the call was let's stretch it out early days, particularly maybe with the green slowing down as we go on. Let's get that body moving a little bit further, ready for the change in, in speed. Yep. So they stretched out ever, ever so slightly. Big job here tonight for the MCC crew, Lloyd, on the stream rink. This exact rink for Mooney Valley were 36 to 10 winners in round one. Yeah, I think in the same uh, way, the, the MCC rink was significantly down. So, I think well, when I say significantly down, they were the worst performed rink of last week. So, they've made some changes. I think there's some good changes to the side. But, you know, I think Ash is certainly going to want to get on the board early. And, and you know, I think we'll see a really tight game. So it was a three from Snapper, it's just over there. So that four shots on the first end we spoke about now is just a one-shot advantage to uh, to MCC. Um, and I think Brendan Gallagher's jumped out of the box there for early days as well, 3-0. So it's going to be one of these games, I think, where the, the numbers or the clangers or whatever you want to call them are going to be so important. Yes, good call, very good call. I don't think there's going to be a game that there's going to be a lot of clangers across the board. Just the, the way the heads have been set up, even just looking across yeah. the other rinks, how tight the heads are. I think it's going to be sort of rare to come across too many clangers. So if there's half a chance to make a number here or there, you're going to be able to see back ends go for them where they get the opportunity. And they play with so much skill that, you know, they, they'll take their opportunities, I think, when they come. But I, I just don't think there's going to be too many of them throughout the game. I think that's a, a fairly good call. <laughs> Very long stride in the super step there, Sammy. I don't know if you've noticed, but really, almost, if you remember the old days of Leif Selby, the way that he transitioned the weight through the bowl, very, very long stride, very, very easy and free-flowing, but very unusual probably more days than modern bowler, which is a bit of a smaller step. Mm, I've seen a lot, a lot of more weight off the mat now from a lot of players. Yeah. So big chance here from Super. You know, he's, they're holding one, so there's a bit of pressure off. Um, a, a really good shot here. Puts a lot of pressure on sticks coming back after him. So, see if he can nail this. <laughs> Thanks to Josh. <laughs> appreciate the shout out. Josh Sanders, jump in the in the comments. Just hit it. Good to to see you're watching, Joshy. Uh, obviously playing for Lilydale tomorrow. So, see if he can. Uh, Get another win on the board for the Dales tomorrow, and I guess he'd be very familiar with a lot of these players out there having played in Premier Division last year for the Dales. Oh, I was going to say, Sticks' last bowl was a side toucher, and I don't know, this is a million of miles away Hello. again, is it? Hello. I'll oh, tell you what. Wow, that was the shot. There's no wind. It's a beautiful Friday night, and uh, Sticks has come to play.
they have, of course, another very experienced uh, Premier Division player. Played at Mentone for the last few seasons. Before that, played at Melbourne. Uh, won a number of titles with Melbourne with, with Russell and Scotty and a lot of the guys that are representing the MCC side this year. So, super, super experienced. Top-class bowler, top-class skip in Premier Division for a long time. And we'll, we'll offer a lot of support for Ash there. It's a... And on cue. And I was going to say, on <laughs> cue, Lloyd. Cool, sits the bowl out and just about falls on top of the jack. So we'll see a, a response here on the same hand sticks. Will it be well, a bit of weight or? I think by the way, it's almost an even more important bowl now to mm. at least get them a close second because the head is fairly loose with that last one of the sticks. He's been sat out the head. A little look again here, Sammy. Oh, I don't think this is miles away, Lloyd. He's got to clear the front, though. Oh, oh. slight touch. I'll tell you what, the oh, weight. Get second shot. I was going to say, the weight was pretty much bang on anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, you, obviously, you always want to get it clean, but I think when you're missing by a centimetre uh, with such good weight... The only problem is it still does sit there at sort of jack high for mm. Dave to try and sit this out again here for a yeah, few. It does look close as well, a little bit less speed. I was going to say, I think yeah. he's played less weight, angles off the front one. But it does put another one there, doesn't it, to to kind of have Ash have a little run at this, or a little bit, just a little bit extra weight. Yeah, it gives Movement them through Dave's off the shot ball, of course. A couple of thirds, so they've built that up pretty well. Lynch looks like he's, he's gone for the other hand, which I think is a very smart decision. Does not want to leave anything more outside with that sticks bowl. If he can, in an ideal world, draw the shot away from that bowl, as <laughs> it says it's, it's cut across, but I think it's come to quite a good home, to be honest. Yeah, it's actually ended up getting them another second shot yeah. there, so... So uh, what's what's Ash, what's going through Ash's mind here? He's, he's having a real look at the angles on this head, Sammy. Talk yeah, us through I think what's going he's on. Sort of more looking at what Nath might end up playing with his second, and where there might be a spot that Ash can get to to cover any possible jack movement of seeing the bowl. I just think he's going to draw forehand either side of this front one here. Yeah, just where Dave sort of pointing yeah. in there into that area and get, give him another one in the head. Anywhere sneaking past the jack is all good. Just for the spectators at home, Sammy's got a little bit. They've got earpieces out there, but Sammy's just giving them tips and tricks as well. He keeps guessing where the ball's going to go. Yeah, you'll see the seconds jump on their phone at the <laughs> conclusion of the end now. Some say that's for live scoring, but no, no, no. <laughs> Got to be very careful here. Ash does not want to give any sort of platform to Lynchy because there is a couple of catches against him. So needs to get the line spot on here. Yeah, good call, mate. I don't think he's miles away here, Lloyd. He's going to just nestle in past the jack. Well, I think that's the perfect home, and I think that was what was responded there, Sammy. It was the call you said, which let's get one out there protecting, but also in the area. And uh, something that he can correct on for his last bowl as well. So very happy with that one, Ash, I would say. Yeah, so everything sort of to the left of screen now lines up to MCC bowl. So now he's got to play fairly careful weight here. Just want to overplay it. Just looking to try and tuck this jack around the corner down the line of sticks is here. Not getting up in time. Nice enough weight for it. The uh, shadows have now gone from the green, Sammy. I think the sun might have gone home for the night. Yeah, it's us. packed up. I don't think Ash is going to be overly adventurous here. I think he's going to look at that last shot and say, look, if we can get back, great. But most importantly, let's keep it on that high side. Draw two, great, but let's, let's get the map back. Let's get momentum back our way. I 
early by that just about as well as he could have. So good conversion by Dave Harrow and MCC. Chris will back that one and lead 3-1 after three ends here at MCC for round two of Premier A. They clash against Mooney Valley here tonight. Brought to you by Myama and Danny Hong Bowling Clubs. Of course, the uh, mighty Moama will once again, with Kevin and the crew down there, I have no doubt will perform well in their league and potentially meet one of these sides in the state championships next year, Sammy. Oh, possible, yep. Have I gone early there on that one? <laughs> <laughs> it's still October time, but I like your thinking, yes. <laughs> Big shot over the firing there. Matt O'Brien's pulled one right on the jack. There's just quality players everywhere you look, and it's going to be a common theme throughout our Premier A live stream games this season, mate. Every side is just full of quality players. Look, I don't know what you're doing tonight. I don't know where you are. You know, I don't know whether you're, you're out, you know, or maybe you, you, you're doing some shopping for the long weekend. I don't know where you are, but just find a screen, find a phone, find a computer and watch the Friday night Premier Division game because they're going to be good. Tris has such a deliberate style on the mat, such a calculated consistent approach and uh, yes <laughs> Sam is getting a bit excited from one of our uh, commenters here of course the mighty Chris Rosanis uh, Trish's uh, teammate of course in VBL2 for the Brighton Blue Devils uh, good evening to you Chris so you should be not watching but with your baby Noise you heard was a big change up at the head there from Michael Sims on the ring next door. Turned what was a pretty bad head into nearly one up there. Played this pretty well here, Lloyd. Yeah, probably what the viewers didn't hear, Sammy, was was Ash kind of making a bit of a statement there, saying a big one here from your, your super. We need you now, and I'm so, so pleased with the response there to, I guess, have that discipline to get one right in the area when the skippers ask for it. Of course, the response here. Yeah, Jack Thompson's done <laughs> oh. absolutely brilliantly. and so hang on a second. Oh. Don't forget about me, he says. Sammy, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty clear and concise on campuses on keeping the weight here. Give yourselves a chance to turn over either bowl. Get another win the head or even open it up. Just kept all that weight and snuck past to a really good spot. having some live scoring issues so Sammy's popped out and meanwhile Super has delivered the perfect response to his first one just putting it a foot behind it looks like it's still one to MCC here so any movement on that shot goal isn't the worst I think Dave might just try and clear that head and, and put a bit more pressure on. Put the, put the pressure on Sticks. Make the consequence much greater if he does hit that front shot bowl and splits, splits the jack. It's a great effort, yeah. So he's played a beautiful speed. Another one receiving just behind the head. Of 
Weather is so calm here at MCC. We've got not a breath of wind. I expect it's going to start to cool down. But for now, perfect conditions of bowls. Let's see if Stick can land this meter on backhand shot. He's having a look. They're having a big look. Oh, it's such a good shot. Such a good shot. So it has got the shot. But most importantly, the way that MCC have set up this head, that there's a lot of options for Dave to play. It's one of those times where perhaps getting the shot might not have been as important as landing those back bowls. Dave with an opportunity now. So much better was the call from Ash. So he's just been able to open up a bit of a gap now to get that bowl. He's got three seconds, MCC. The shot bowl being the valley bowl. Sticks wanting to give a friend. Just a question of pace now. Yeah, he's, he's given a bit of a clap, so it just didn't quite have the pace. So. First opportunity, we can see the angle there. All those three bowls, the green, the, the, the black and purple, they're all MCC. So as Sammy comes back to the head, uh, let's see if Ash can take a moment in this game. We spoke about opportunities. And I think MCC have a big opportunity here to make this very difficult for Lynchy. So they are one down, Sammy with three seconds and the three catches. What can Ash do? Now lynchy has got some options to think about. I'm thinking we might just be going for those two back bowls. So jack movement's okay. Trail the jack away. But most important to get one behind the head in a receiving position. He likes it. This is pretty good, Lloyd. He's just going to run all the way. So it was open, so that's just checking whether he had enough weight. Yeah, it's a good point. I think maybe we have seen a little bit of drop in temperature here, which has led to a little bit less finish. I think Ash might go a little bit quicker. I think more than less, yep. Yeah. Three seconds. Big moment here. Yeah, for definitely Ash. more than less here. Likes it. Lloyd, what's he got? He likes it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow, <laughs> we Sammy, Sammy, look at the heads. Everyone's saying, how has this happened? Let's have a look. He has flicked the front oh, and just the flick roll. Oh, it was that nice front one and <laughs> clear road past that and he nearly clips the bowl out for a few. It's a cruel game, isn't it, Sammy, when the good ones don't make it and the bad ones do, isn't it? Go back. Sammy's just got a lot of fans here, so if you do hear a few good fans, <laughs> it's another one looking for an autograph. Can Lynchy draw a second, Sammy? Nice line for it, Lloyd. Oh, Lynchy. Oh, oh, no Lynchy. way. Oh, he's done it. No, he hasn't. Yes, he has. One, I think, was the call. Six will have a look at it, though. It's a good shot either way. Good end of bowls. Maybe I should leave to go fix up the scoring more often. Well, look, there were comments while you were away just saying, can Sammy not... Yeah, they were actually down, looking yeah. through. Look at these guys. Dan Glory from the Horsham City Bowls Club giving me some rubbish. No, no, they're just tuning in. <laughs> Plenty of clubs with it on the big screen on Friday night after a bit of practice before Pennant tomorrow. Yeah, well, I think they're probably, you know, putting some bowls down one hand and then the other hand's got the live stream with the headphones in. You know, they're really getting into the Premier Division. Now, the best bowlers like Nathan Black uh, keen to see how this game is going to finish because it is going to be very important for the season. 
14 rounds. As I was a, thought you thought, maybe do that. 14 <laughs> rounds, you're right. So they're either meeting up there to discuss length, or it could be what's for dinner. Uh, what's for lunch tomorrow? Yes. Around the grounds, uh, I don't know who said it when Dale Jones jumped out of the box with a four, but... Uh, I just put the balls on the bear. Yeah, yeah, someone did because it's been eight Yikes. down the way. Yeah. Yep. Of course, um, as as you as well, we found out when you went off to help with the, uh, the old uh, live scoring, if you do want to find out the results of the other games, you can go on to Bowls Link, Sammy. Correct, mate. On the old Bulls Now app or on the Bulls Link results portal. For the first time anywhere across the country. Anywhere. Premier A and Prem Reserve. Surely not. Anywhere. End by end. Live scoring. I will admit my phone did come out last <laughs> week during the break just to keep an eye on the other games. Just see how the teams were travelling and who was up to what. Well, why wouldn't you? Yeah, why wouldn't you? We've got the Bulls Victoria tipping. We've got... Obviously, the Friday night live stream of the premier product of the country at the moment. And then we've got the live scoring that you can keep up to date. And Tris Doolan playing beautiful shots like this all over the jack. Sammy, how, do, how important do you think that pre-game roll-up is for opposition teams? Obviously, we've seen now MCC are up 12-9, but really Mooney Valley have kind of kept with them. Um, yeah, it just gives a bit of time to just figure out what it's running, first of all, um, play a few different lengths, and go from there. But like we said, the quality of plays we have on show, remember a lot of experience and playing on a lot of different green surfaces, speeds. Doesn't affect them, does it really? They just get on the green and go bang. I think so, yep. yeah. I remember Dave actually one many years ago said to me, "You got a bowl on the bank. I think it was at Mentone, and rolled it a meter, and said, if, if you can't judge the green from that, you're no good." And it stuck with me a lot because I think you can learn a lot just by watching what the bowlers are doing, staying in the game. So. Certainly a little bit more of a, a little bit more energy having to go through the bowls now, Sammy. I think. a nice home. Here comes Jack. Jack. Yeah, important for him to just get another one in the area here. Keep building up the head for the boys in the back end. The track's beautiful. Yeah, he's played this pretty well, I reckon, Lloyd. The track's beautiful. He's just got to land on something here. Land the shot. Whoa. Doesn't quite fall the right way, but good bowl nonetheless, even if he hasn't got the shot. Very smart bowl, I thought, Sammy. I think just playing that a little bit extra right, reaching the back bowl. The bonus is the shot. But finishing in the good home, as we said early for front ends, get into good homes. Oh, what a cracking shot. Gee, he just started well, Lloyd. You've <laughs> talked him out before the game. I didn't know much a lot about Steve, but he started very well here and snuck sneaks in Rob on the jack. Well, just between you and me, uh, one of the nicest guys going around as well. You know, he's just a gentleman of the game, and uh, he's putting pressure on early with Tris. As they say, front ends win games, and the back ends dictate by how much. Oh, sorry. Brad Gibson, who's found it pretty well on this hand so far. Thought he was quick initially and has crashed into Riley's. He's turned that up possibly for a second shot. I think Ash still confident they hold a couple here.
Yeah, beautiful speed from Dave. Beautiful speed. Three shots now. Lynch is saying, let's give her a chance. Certainly not... The door hasn't been closed, put it that way. There's, there's certainly options here for Lynchy and Co. Certainly a bit more weight here from Sticks. The line is good. He is liking it. He's on the jog. Is he what? Is he getting up there quick enough, though? Okay, so that's Triss's bowl on the way in there. He's flipped it in. Options now here for Dave. Does he just try and sit on his last bowl? Does he look at changing up some angles there? Will Lynchy go a little bit quicker for the three? What, what, what's going on here? Well, the boys so, are going to have a bit of a conference about it, so clearly important sort of head in the context of the game. It's the first time where MCC have had real multiple bowls in the area, so... I think it'll be forehand and something similar, just working off his own bowl, trying to turn it down. I guess they're looking at where is where is the danger here. How yeah, can that we might get be the other thing shots? as well, yeah. yeah. No, I, I do see, I think if, if Sticks does play a similar shot, there's the green bowl, there's the white bowl, there's the shot bowl, there's the jack. So I don't think Ash is overly thrilled with the size of the head or size of the target, if you like. I think he's just going to try and draw another one here, Sammy. Oh, another one fell out, but good shot either way. So heaps in there for MCC here on this end. Yeah, look, uh, there's... Are you thinking wait here, or oh, was I'm that thinking, too early? I'm thinking wait, okay. Sammy. I know that the viewers want to see it, you know, the kids at home come out here to see the big shots <laughs> played by Lynch. You mean? And I think, yep, well, I think we're going to see it, Sammy, I really do. All right. I mean, there's obviously, the only risk there is that if he does pop out one of them, but there's another one, yeah, we're going big. This is wait. Oh. We've seen this line-up before. Could he get them all? Might get this on to the jack. Oh, oh no. Oh, well, it leaves them with one in the head. Mm. Wow, okay. So they are, I think, two down still with only the one Mooney Valley Bowl in there. Will Ash protect? Will he go for that Mooney Valley Bowl to put the pressure on? Yeah, I think he's looking to land this bowl here based on where yes. Dave signalled. Oh, this is getting a bit exciting. So if he does okay, land this okay. bowl, it could be five. And I'm saying Lynchy would then have to attack, and that would be a seven-shot turnaround, potentially. So does, does Ash just look to go for the protection and then make his last bowl the damage? Yeah, let's see if he goes after it now and puts an eighth under a bit of pressure if he can let this bowl through. Oh, you called it well here, Sammy. I reckon he's going for it. He's after this. Sammy. I think he's got to turn more. There's a gap, so... Oh, it's probably just overplayed the speed chance, fraction. Yeah. yeah. I think that's probably what he's, he's thinking, a little bit disappointed in the other end because he lost that bowl. So I think the idea was, let's sit the bowl, but if we miss, we get into a good home. But he may have another chance. Isn't Lynch going to go big again? Uh, I'm not sure. I think he's going to go back to the draw, doesn't he? Get back one back in the head or not? Oh, stuff that. Come on, it's just going. Lynch on a Friday night. <laughs> He wasn't far away with his last, to be fair, Lloyd. He's going to get the jack as well. <laughs> He's done it. Killed Sammy's, it. Sammy's almost pulled a hip out, uh, seeing what was going on there. But, uh, look, I love that. You know, I, I think that's fearless bowls. You know, I, remember Matty Flapper once said to me, if you're good enough to hit it, it doesn't matter whether that bowl's there. And I think that's what Lynchy just showed us. Yeah, he was pretty right with his first one. He... There was heaps happening for a, a bulk tight underneath the jack. And we'll restart the fifth and Lloyd. Well, we put that end in context. I mean, ultimately, if Lynchy does miss that shot, he's two down with a chance of potentially five. We're now resetting. Mooney Valley have a chance to set up the head a bit better than they did that time. So in the context of this game, can you put a little circle around in five and just say that was the moment? 
Find the line it. He, he actually has. Uh, <laughs> Someone watching from Wales, Sammy. Yeah, Mark Watts. I'm pretty sure he's a regular of the, um, oh, the old BVTV. Doesn't miss a whole lot, does Mike? Good to have him on board here. Great to have him on board. Certainly a little bit deeper in the rink this time. We've got the, the jack right on the tee. Yeah, so... Not surprising because the first couple of they've had going back this way, Valley haven't quite found it. So a little bit of tipping for you as well here, Sammy. Typically the way they're playing here at MCC is a fraction quicker than the way back. It's almost a bit of a downhill slope coming the way back. Not huge, but enough to kind of get you, you guessing. Just quietly as well, Sammy. I don't know if you picked it up on the Dale Jones rink. Uh, I think uh, he just picked up a six. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. They're two rinks over. They've picked up a four and a six. And <laughs> we've seen or heard nothing about it. Look, I think in fairness, in Mooney Valley are very much, uh, they, they ride the energy, they're, they're very uh, up and about, they support each other, we love that about them. I think maybe MCC is going for a bit of a silent assassin approach, you know, nice and measured. Just going about feed. their business, yeah. Yep. Just going about their business. Yeah, that's a Hugh, we said there wouldn't be too many clayers and <laughs> we've got a bit of a cricket score happening here on rank number four. Well, normally, I think at the start of games, when you get to about end five, you can see maybe one rink starting to pull away, and that being an important rink to the context of the overall. But right now, across all rinks, we are tight. I think, Sammy, this could just be a game that's going to go right down to the wire. I'd strap in. It's not going to be decided by a lot, mate. Neither was the Valley's opening round clash against Yarraville Footscray at home where they got in by 13 shots in the end. Great two, two Two winning ranks, as you say, Lord, we see a nice one by Jack Thompson. Just a foot past. And so how, I guess, hard is this jump from Division 1 to Premier? I know... Obviously, it changes this year with Premier A and Premier B, but you've got to remember, Mooney Valley did come from Division 1. How challenging is that change? I think um, Mooney Valley, really, since they, they we saw them in action winning Division 1 and then winning the playoff final against Fitzroy last season, their side has changed slightly. They've gone and got some back-end players over on the far end there. Matty O'Brien from Harry Glenn and Alex Skilton making the move from Melbourne. Obviously, Kay Nelson now flying down from Queensland this season as one of their marquee players. But apart from that, in terms of uh, their front end and this entire rink we saw here, we've, we've already seen them at different level. So I think the back end are up to it. I think it's going to be decided across the course of the season in the front end. Sneaking past yeah. and following up from that, I'm interested to see how deep they can go. Can they make finals? Is that a possibility? Who knows? It's so open. We don't. We're not really sure. Of course, we've seen them for the first time as well. We saw them a little bit in Division One, but at this level, how they're going to fare over the course of 14 rounds, we're we're not sure. But it's going to be a fun ride. I can guarantee that. And am I right in saying Prem to Prem B is one side relegated as well? I think um, that's going to be very interesting as we get to the yep. later rounds because whoever's f sitting in fifth or sixth... It's going to be cutthroat, yeah. They're either going into finals, but in the same way, you want to maintain your spot in Premier. Correct. Because how hard it is to get there. Yep. 
when we talk about this Mooney Valley side, this hasn't been a one year get into Division 1 then go straight up to Premier. This has been a long time. You'd know better than anyone at Glenroy just how challenging this step has been for Mooney Valley. Knockout finals galore and to come out on the right ledger, that is a, a super effort. And they're awarded with a spot in Prem A and... Because one of these sides is going to go back to back. For wins after round one and two. Rod Peterson reckons Mooney Valley in the top four. Top four. Well, there's no reason why they can't. And Dave here looks like he's got a beautiful speed. <sighs> Nearly getting all the way back and both bowls end up falling <laughs> in. Just to make it a touch harder. Brendan Elliott joining in this evening, mate. Cracking night for bowl, sure is. Did I see Jimmy Whitehead as well popping in with a, a cheeky comment, Sammy? No, I'm not allowed to say anything, I don't think. Oh, OK. We've <laughs> seen a bit of everything tonight. We've seen bowls missed by millimetres. We've seen bowls drop together. We've seen everything on the uh, the live stream. Of course, proudly supported by Dan and, and uh, Moama. And sticks. Draws a third, I think. Sammy, is it three? Dave just saying, what kind of speed do you want here, Ash? Ash's response was, if you lose it, you lose it. Which I'm that saying, Sammy, means basically I want you to go reasonably quick here. Yeah, do you, have you seen it? What, what sort of weight did Dave choose to play, mate? Is it real big or... Look, I think he's... A searching sort of weight? Yeah, more of a searching sort of weight type player. I, I think it'll be that... Well, found a gap. Okay, so the end before that Lynch was able to kill the and really favoured MCC and all of a sudden, big hit, reset, replay the end and Nathan's walking back to the mat now holding a few, so yeah, look, there's could no turn out to be a huge conversion in the end. No doubt about that end being important, particularly if they can score here. Uh, that would be a dagger, I think, in the, the heart of the MCC boys and girl. Jack in the pit here, Sammy. Yeah, plenty of options for contact. I just think it's a bit easier than trying to draw it at the moment. Not a lot of room. As you said, this forehand side seems to be playing a little tighter, so it doesn't make it any easier to draw. Okay, wait again. He's having a look. Yeah, he's close here, Lloyd. Oh, very close to getting all of them. <laughs> that was the call, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Jack's all other one's just sort of rocked there, but just stayed and hasn't gone out the head. But it certainly is a much kinder shot. Now, this bowl becomes very, very important for Lynch. He needs to get another one in there because if that shot bowl goes, great shot there from Mash. Okay, so forehand draw here. Just trying to beat this one of Dave's out here to the left hand side. It's that little bit of hold, I reckon. Oh, Lori, yeah. can you see this green run before, have you? That just held off for sure, so. You know, actually, um, I think on the first year of the live stream, I, I did play on the live stream, but it was on rink one. So I think rink two is a little bit kinder, but there certainly is a little bit of a hold coming down this way that we just saw, particularly if the weight's just over. What an evening for it, Lloyd. What a venue here at MCC. 
Yeah, it's um, certainly the temperature has dropped, Sammy, but I don't think you can complain about the night. There's not a breath of wind. Yep. It's actually ideal bowling conditions, if we're honest. Ash now with an opportunity. He's having a look. He's close if he clears Triss's. Oh, Sammy. I reckon that's that's a couple of times Ash has been millimetres away from the perfect yeah, shot. Had a few chances, yep. So in one way, Ash should be saying, look, if we keep putting bowls in that area, we're going to get one. In the other way, Mooney Valley is saying, we probably got a little bit lucky a couple of times. We probably got a little bit fortunate. Now let's make sure we put the pressure on in return. So game remains tight. Who's going to be the first one to break away? So, about a quarter of the way through, mate, and there's nothing really to split them. Fairly low scoring on three of our rigs, real tight contests. Well, no one Actually, told. The Jones Fisher rigs didn't get the memo that it was going to be a low scoring game, but even for now, and still plenty to play for, and Tris pretty handy here. Yeah, great start. Good shot. Tris. Just playing their own game over there, Dale and, and Dylan. Uh, playing cricket, and the rest of them are playing lawn bowls. No cricket chat. No Didn't cricket. you get that yeah, message? Sorry, my apologies. Sorry, <laughs> boss. Tell you what, there have been some cricket scores, haven't there? Just quietly. No. <laughs> sorry. You're trying to get me fired. <laughs> There's another great response there from Riley. Just two bowls in a really good area. I think that's going to be key today. It's just a lot of bowls in good areas particularly from the front half. Yeah, Triss has played two crackers here, Sammy. Yeah, in the air, it's good stuff. Oh, that's why she's won. You know, two Victorian Open medals just last, this year, well, this year, wasn't it, really? That's why she's in the VBL side at Brighton. That's why she's, uh, she's one of the best in the game at the moment. She's consistent. She's reliable. Jack Thompson got speed to this, but Riley's bowling the way in and turns it all the way up for what's possibly shot. Tell you what, though, I love the speed that he played that out. I mean, he, yeah, he, yep. Even if he doesn't get the shot, by which he didn't, he's, he's in such a good home now, so. Great shot here by Super. Yeah, good shot. I just reckon he might have been oh. lacking a little bit of weight for that shot to sort of turn Triss's through and pass the jack. I, I couldn't, couldn't agree more. And are we going to see a more positive awesome bowl skills. here? Yeah. Lovely track. That's unfortunate. It's actually probably a little slightly, off, yeah. yeah. A couple of angles away from, from the valley there. So I don't think Ash is going to be unhappy with that, but certainly a lot of options with the amount of bowls in the head. Boys just communicating jack position here. Tanya asking, where's Chip? He's on the rink next door. Tanya playing second. In the rink with Michael Sims and Kay Nelson skipping. Led by Josh Rennix. Bit of confusion when the sides went up last night. <laughs> there there might have been a new recruit under the name Josh Lennox, but I can confirm that Put is here and Leedy and Leedy well. He's drawn the shot over there on the rink next door.
A lot of conversation here, Sammy. What are, what are the boys saying? There's big angles here yeah. and lots of opportunity, I think, Lloyd, to change the shape of the way this head lies at the moment. I think they're, that's, are they looking at maybe some sort of connection between bowls that might get a better angle? Or are they just saying, let's just hit something and see what happens? Just searching sort of weight, I think. No, I don't think he'll be losing his bowl. Angles off Tris back to the shot bowl could possibly clip it off without Jack movement. Falling out soon enough. Definitely searching weight here, Sammy, I think. Oh, maybe not. It's a roll out of Jack's, but nothing more. I think what we saw there is uh, just how little those bowls moved with just that touch weight. Even with that, that was only just sort of over the draw weight. I thought they might have played a tad more. Yeah. I think part, part of the problem there is when it slows down, when the bowls are hit, they don't move as far. So you actually need more speed. But in the flip side, if it does clear, then you're going to lose your bowl. So it's a very tough shot to play into that pack unless you're just going to go straight at it. And she's rocking a bit of a... He was copying it from the boys that he was on stream and hadn't <laughs> cleaned up before the game yeah. as well. And rightfully so. No, <laughs> I, I like it. I like the rugged look. The, the trademark fear the beard, really, type thing from Lynch here, isn't it? All right, let's see if he plays a little bit more weight with this one, Brad Gibson, or not. I think that was the call there from Sticks. I think it was, let's get a bit... Let's get a bit more weight going into this head. Really try and change it up for Nath, hey? Definitely more speed, Lloyd, and closer, I think. What's he going to change? Over the shot bowl. Oh, didn't miss that by a lot. Does to give them a couple past the jack now, though, mate. Yeah, and that's that's the immediate reaction from Ash when he saw that ball come past us, Dave. Let's let's get one past. You know, let's keep that hole. Let's keep that gap. Let's get one past the head. So how's his speed? That's the only question. Yeah, he does pretty well, mate. He splits those up. Yeah, I think if, if Lynchy gets this ball clearly on the nose, uh, then it's going to go deeper than that, that Dave bowl. But if there's any work off the pack, which is obviously a bigger target, then Dave's bowl really comes into play. So uh, I think Dave would be pretty happy with where that's finished up. Split the two bowls as well from, from Mooney Valley. She playing the big weight. Oh! <laughs> I don't know if you heard it, Sammy. Yeah. He's gone for the inside of Triss's bowl to get back to the shot bowl. He's clipped Triss's bowl and hasn't got enough off it to change the angle and has gone straight through the gap. Gee, that's a super effort. Yeah, it's an unfortunate part for Lynch is. Um, he he's actually opened up the target a little bit more as well. So, you know, the next one's going to be even harder. But there are still angles, I think, off that pack. We'll see when, when we get a view of the head. Ash is clearly going to try and go for the backest. Has he got enough to it's clear, clear I think. Ooh. Oh, he actually ended up crashing. Okay. Okay. So what are we saying? Big pace. Big pace go to the... The bowl clean, straight back. I think he might look for the same thing to try and get the inside of Triss's. Back to that shot bowl. Sammy, can I ask you if he does get the white and that gets the shot bowl without the jack, how many would Mooney Valley be holding? Depends. Riley's hanged around. It's possibly two, maybe, maybe three. He's gone the white. Closer again. this He's gone time. Again. Oh no. <laughs> 
jump. Unbelievable, Tammy. Oh, Jack rebounding everywhere, and it's landed with Brad Gibson's bowl. Wow, and the right. Valley hold one. However, however. Well, hello. How many seconds does MCC hold, Sammy? Oh, at least three, isn't there? Oh, I'm thinking it's four. I think that's that's Super's bowl there. So I think we can see the oh, one yep. behind a Triss. Then there's definitely Dave's and Ashes. And then I reckon both of those could almost be Super's. Or one. All right, huge bowl here, mate. City Valley have had this sort of little three, four, five shot lead for the last 20 or so minutes. Asherah with a chance to even things right up here. Wow, this is a big moment for Ash. Valley holding one, MCC with multiple seconds. No, it's missed under the Valley. Will escape with one. Yeah, I was having a look at the uh, MCC players' expression from the moment it was released. There wasn't too much excitement. Yeah, Ash is a little bit frustrated with himself there, but saying that, they've only dropped one, and that's a three-five game after six. I would say that is a Dan on Club Moama Premier Division live stream classic uh, start. Eight shots after six. It's ends. been good. The last few ends have just started to tighten up the way the heads have yeah. shaped up and. A few more conversion shots or attempted conversion shots shots been played. No real surprise they've stuck with this same length. They went in this direction last time. They built a pretty good head. I think he's picked up his game, Riley, in the last few ends. Yep. I think he's really started to put some pressure on Triss. I think Triss has picked up her game as well. So I think what you're saying right now is that not only is the score tightening up, but the standard is raised another level, hasn't it? So is, do we expect it to drop any more than this, the pace, Sammy? I think potentially is... I don't know, mate. you probably played more bowls here than I have. <laughs> <laughs> He's leading you astray there. He's waiting for you the wrong answer. But certainly will stay pretty stagnant for a little while and then I think it's yeah. going yep. might just drop a couple of paces as it gets really cool. It's, quite, it's actually quite comfortable the temperature it is. here, isn't it? Yeah. Kane Nelson next door going big. He's going big. Kane Nelson clears it out and I'm thinking that's a big number. Michael super waving three fingers in the air to... Signal he's ripped that ball out for three shots. Jeez. Nice ball at the end as well. That was a ripper. <laughs> yeah, classic shot, really. Yeah, they're pretty happy about that one as well, <laughs> next door, just quietly. A bit of a tricky length, this one. You know, the mat just a um, couple of metres up going to the ditch. It does have a little bit of speed up towards the ditches, so you don't want to be really careful that you don't overplay any shots here and can force you to drop a little bit short, as we just saw with Triss. So here's a tricky length. See who can nail it first. And then I think they'll probably start looking at attacking. Beautiful bowl there. All happening here at MCC. So I mean, <laughs> the, 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 it's actually really started to pile up. How's the crowd? I was just about to mention yeah. that. It's unreal here. I think there might have been some that were listening to the commentary at home and said, "No, look, I better get here." Yep. And, uh, say it for myself. You've won them over. <laughs> Still don't think the winning bowl's been bowled yet in this end. Would have thought so. Let's see if Jack can't put a bit of pressure on. His first one was super close, and this one. Still a little bit quicker. I 
I think we have to note as well the um, the average age across the four rinks. Very, very young. Premier Division this year, I think, is the youngest uh, as well, the youngest average age I think I've seen for some time. Yeah, they would be by a fair way, I reckon, as well, mate. Great ball from Super there. Could be the shot. Jack Cassidy, the youngest of them all, leaning over on the firing there for Alex Gilton. Good to see him. Just won an Australian yeah, title tonight. Jack, yep. I think. Yeah. Of course, current state, under-18 singles champ as well. Uh, really nice young kid as well, Sammy, to be honest. I, I really like him. I'm a real fan of, of what he does and how he behaves as a person. Had a lot to do with him at Sunbury when we had the under-18 program there. and Just always saying thank you, always very nice to volunteers and to organisers. And I think he's going to have a really good future in the game. So I look forward to watching him grow as a bowler. No one really nailing it yet, Sammy, this end. Still a lot of room for players of this calibre to draw the shot. Still yet to be played. It's coming, mate. I'm telling you, it's coming. I don't know when it's coming. Oh, I'm going to stick my neck out here. I reckon it's going to come right now. Right Dixie here. He's absolutely smoked the line with his first one. Just looking for a small correction in speed. Yeah, very good point, Sammy, in terms of when you're trying to correct on your second bowl for any new bowlers out there, you want to correct one, not the other. So Sticks' advantage here is that he's just saying, let's play the same line. Just add a little bit of weight. Off his reaction, I think he's quick, but I don't know if he's too bad. He's only going to sit this back one. He's not even going to sit the back one. He's just going to draw the touch up. Go. And is he stuck around or not? Well, I think that little bit of a flick might have been enough to, to, to give it to Jack, I think is what's happened. So I'm saying it's a Mooney Valley shot. That's my call. Which probably means MCC is holding three or four, but. Dave looks close here, Sammy. Oh, oh the shot's shot. been drawn now, so I thought it <laughs> probably takes the measure out of it actually as well. Moving the jack sideways probably means it's just the one, but. I tell you what, a classy bowl. A very good bowl. one at that, yep. A classy bowl, I mean. It, classy bowl indeed. It's one of those things, uh, perfect thirding. You know, when, when it's your time to get one in there after the leads might have just not nailed it, put them in good areas, uh, to, to draw a front toucher when the jack is on the tee. Super difficult shot. I think we might see a bit of weight from Lynchy again here on the forehand. Just over, I don't think it's going to be anything crazy. Has he got enough, Sammy? Has he got yeah, enough? The boys asking it for it to hold past the front. Yeah, the reaction from Sammy. Okay. Yeah, he, was, he said he did a bit of a push. So I think what he said there is he just didn't quite have enough pace to get the connection he was looking for. Does give himself a bit of an angle now to work off his own there. Sort of a bowl and a half in front of where the shot bowl is. Jack Thompson is the backest. There is Jack movement, so... Yeah, it's a bit of a tough one for Ash to play to here because the Jack really could go anywhere depending on how the bowls hit, so... so like the, the distance where the bowls are from the ditch sort of makes it hard to cover as well. Yeah. So is it going to be just, let's add another one and, and put a bit of pressure on? Is it is it going to be trying to cover one option? I'm not sure. Yeah, he's looking up on the back end, so... Jesse's just going to try and look to draw another shot here, mate. Right 
So those two bowls directly there behind the head, they are um, Mooney Valley, correct? So... Yeah, so Riley's got the yellow and green XG there. That's his, and then that's Stevie Moore's on the centre directly behind it, so... Yeah, it sticks on the wide side, so I'm guessing... Lynch is looking to just land that with the yard to move the, the jack to those two bowls. I don't know if Ash's last bowl changes any what weight Nath uses. Yeah, it's a good point, isn't it? Certainly <laughs> similar pace. Searching. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to hold on in time here. Uh, Played nice, called cool, a conversion weight, but just taking underneath. Geez, last couple of ends, Kate Nelson and Co. just starting to turn it on a little bit there. A few big conversions are now drawing to add. Speaking of drawing to add, Ashron, can he throw a second in here? Just a little bit shy, I think he's, he's probably one that we, he, a bit like a few ends ago where he said that we've got one, I've got to get one, let's not go too adventurous. We're now going to have, as we look at the beautiful MCC sky, uh, we're going to have a bit of a chat here from the uh, MCC team. I have no doubt discussing what length strategy they're going to look at. Yeah, stops the run of three ends in a row there that the Valley had going, not any bulked balls or such, but the momentum might have just... We'll have a look at Starting this. Starting to swing their way a little. They haven't been far off, though. The end coming back this way. They built a pretty good head. Of course, Ash had a chance to land the ball out to make a number. So let's see what they come up with here. Yeah, the last graphic that just came up on the screen I thought was really very interesting to have a look at how Mooney Valley had won the last three ends. But I think probably the last three ends, MCC had a lot of chances. They did. That they just kind of missed out on. We talk about, you know, footy is the most obvious. If you're missing shots on goal, but you still feel like you're in control of the game. So yep. it's a difficult decision to change the length when maybe you're going okay. But I think that's what we're going to see. I think we're going short, Sammy. Ash saying, big start, duels. So you're going well, but let's just nail this one and really see what these Mooney Valley front end are about. Just reiterating, I'm not sure if you hear it there, big start, duels. Good change of length there from Riley. Finishing about two feet from Jack, but certainly something he can work on. Scotty Mortimer kills the end next door. They'll go for another one. That game is heating up. Yeah, good correction there from Trust there, Sammy. Yeah. Expect nothing less. The, the fire over there, mate. Brendan Gallagher and Alex Skilts, they are flying through. Yeah, well, I think I saw uh, someone on their phone over there and they had to listen to the live stream. said, if I can race through this game, I might just be able to catch a little bit of the brilliance that Sammy's offering in the commentary box. <laughs> yeah. They looked either of them muck around, do they? Really? Are. They're quite quick on this green, really. No one's really mucking around. I think it's just been just a really tight game. Yeah, it has been. There's been a fair sort of bit of con conversation about yeah. shots being played. We've had a dead end as well. Yeah, good shot there from Super as well. Yeah, played that good. Yeah, and a lot of conversations about length and people trying to tactically work out how they can get an advantage. And you know, we talk about the the team chat utilising it to stop momentum or. You know, utilising it as a, as a bit of a breaker to get one rink ahead rather than another rink. But sometimes you just need to have a chat and say, hey, what are you, what are you seeing, Sammy? What's going on out there? So 
Supers played it. Yeah, really he's great played this well. really good again. Has the right speed for it. So if we talk about a green now, I think we said 14 to 15 at the start of the game. We're now looking probably, I reckon, around 12. That's my guess. In terms of the way that your approach changes as a player, Sammy, what are you now thinking when a bowl, say, is now a foot in front? Is it still the draw? Do you yeah. start looking at playing weight? What's the, what's the strategy? It does change. I think this forehand side still coming this way and backhand going the other direction is still turning nicely enough. We saw there, as you said, it didn't quite finish off the way we probably saw in the first six or seven ends, just sort of held on that last little bit, and with good enough speed, dropping the shot there, Jack Thompson, good ball. Mm, ball. Yeah, you're right, it does change a little bit in terms of sort of weights played, depending on how the set's up, a few more maybe sort of stun and run type shots as well, just trying to keep turning the heads over and changing it up when down. Yeah, I mean, I think the evolution of, obviously, synthetic green is becoming so much more popular in bowls nowadays, carpets, roofs. Uh, playing on grass, particularly when it's changing temperature like this, it's, it is a different style of game. So it's quite remarkable how quickly these players are able to adapt in the way that they play. It's interesting, I think, you know, looking at the history of Premier Division, even though... We do have, I guess, a revolution of synthetic and carpet greens. Your Premier Division champions typically are from a grass green or play regularly on grass green. So you know, this is the surface that you want to perform well on throughout the season. Albeit you're playing the final on carpet. Yeah. <laughs> At the beautiful... Dan on club again this year? Sammy, I know? hope so, yes. I heard a rumour Brighton was a chance. Is there any truth in that or...? Just drifting past Bradley Gibson with his first one there. Have a shout out here for Lexi Rowan from the commentary team. I quite like Lexi, Sam. Guessing that's some sort of relation to Ash? We'd think so. I would hope so. <laughs> Harry, good work. Thanks for tuning in. Brad Gibson asking this one to get up there. I think he's up there okay. Probably needs a steady. Oh, just missing seeing that bowl. Just pass again. So, Ash, we're thinking two down here. Is that... Yeah. Of Valley's the second shot. Yeah, I think two down. I think that's probably what's causing the trouble here is how does that angle work? I'm thinking maybe the wide bowler super through the jack could be the option, Sam. Yeah, either that or if there are angles off Riley's front one back up to the jack or the shot pole. So, yep. You see it here, it's probably slowed up about a second or so. So, we'll see if that changes the way Ash chooses to play with this one. Certainly got a firm pace at this Ash. Looking at that split and angle. And <laughs> I don't know whether he's got the result. But it is what I mentioned, that wide bowl being an option through the jack to Trisses. And I think it... So the jack is sort of, you can almost see it sneaking at the very, very little bit just to the right there of Trisses' bowl, so... I think it is a holding shot. Yeah. There is a shot here for Nathan to get up through Riley's to pop Trish's ball out the head here. How's he gone? He loves it. It's got a hold on. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> well, we had a couple from Ash. Now it's time for Lynchy to get a little bit severely. It, it does clear the front one now, so oh, if it clears that, it nearly yeah. gets it all the way. So. so I guess if Triss's bowl goes here, I mean that's four, isn't it? Yeah, at least depends what Nathan won. Nathan's goes if it hangs around or not. More interested in what Ash can come up with here to try and stop Nathan getting there. It's such a congested head to try and draw to. There's look, I don't think he's got a choice. Uh, bowls a meter out here as well. Yeah, I think he's got to look to splash this jack. I think he's got to try and either get another one in there, or even get some movement off the jack 
into that little port there. Don't think there's much other option because if he can't, it does open up that cannon. We can see green, green, white would be potentially four or five shots to Lynch. So Ash is not going to leave this head as it currently stands, regardless of whether he's holding. Another dead end. So that was the delay there from the next door rink. So they'll be here for a long time. And they're interested. They're very interested. Okay, so here's the chance. There's no doubt now, if that duel and bowl goes out, it could be five or six. So the angle for mine, Sammy, the outside green and blue that we can see, through them all. Ashrow has had a chance to make a multiple come in this direction. He's missed. Now's Nathan Lynch's opportunity. Firm weight. He likes it, Sammy. This has got it, Lloyd. He likes it. See you later. What a shot. Oh, no <laughs> way. It stayed in. <laughs> oh. Wow, it's a good shot. For one. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. I, I have to see that again to see how... Just as Bolt ended up staying in the head for second I shot. I honestly don't know how it has. Maybe it was that little bit that we spoke about earlier, is that you need to play bigger pace to get the movement of all the bowls one onto the other had to be a little bit quicker because I can't work out how that white bowl stayed let's have a look here again Triss's bowl goes it's five. Oh, that's unbelievable oh wow unbelievable I, I, I think maybe he didn't quite play enough pace I mean he's got the contact the bowl hasn't gone so yeah <laughs> a very unlucky result there for Moody Valley. So, single to the Valley, and yet neither side on the stream rig's been able to break away. Yeah, I probably haven't seen a game quite like this where teams have had chances and played good bowls when they've had chances, and still cannot pick up more than a single. Talking about picking up more than a single, 15-10 uh, over on uh, Dabble <laughs> yeah, 3. Yeah, good. <laughs> He's, they're not thinking singles over there. They're thinking, where can I pick up the next number from? It's unbelievable. But a very important scoreline in the context of the game because just as you think Mooney Valley might be stretching away a little bit, that rink is really keeping that scoreboard nice and tight with the other three rinks all going the way of the valley. Yeah, so Riley Boxall, aka Dougie, sticking with his length going this direction and really Did good correction. A Dougie there, do you know where Dougie comes from? Mm, not Seven? sure, do you? Sure. No, I Probably don't, should yeah. know. If any one of the fans might be a f uh, follower of Dougie. Comment section, help us out. Yeah, let us know. Still perfect conditions here at MCC. There's it is white. getting a little bit colder, but there's really no wind, which is wind chill is normally what kind of affects you, I guess, but it's not a breath here, Sam. Yeah, that's making for a good quality game, mate. Took it maybe the first couple ends just to find it. Well, there's your under-18 pairs champions, ladies and gentlemen, just saying Former. here we go. Former, that's going back a while. I had to come up with something for them, and that's the best I could think of. They didn't give me anything else. I asked them as well, but they couldn't give me anything else. So well, don't we'll run with that. Don't make former champions, man. That's, that's, that's <laughs> Clearly, they're not under 18 anymore. Let's be honest. No. Big ball from Super here. Just. Hanging out a little bit. So very interesting to see the call there, just to try and get a little bit of movement maybe, Sammy. Was that what, what 
Ash was looking for. Missed the call. I would have thought it would just be to fatten the head up as much as possible. Yeah. Even more important here for Jack Thompson to double up here, mate, after he's found it. There is room. Well, look, I think regardless of what it is, just to finish on the line is the key here. Open up no angles, and he has done that to perfection. To Tasking perfection. Full in and has done well. We have a look at the line there, Sammy, of those bowls. It gives no angle for Super to work with, which means he's got a draw with the perfect weight. How's he going, Lloyd? Tell you what. <laughs> it's underneath. Gets him third shot for now. Good correction. Well, such a good shot, wasn't it, for really no result. Uh, I reckon this conversation, Sammy's going along the lines of, hey, Sticks, you know, get one in if you can, but, but let's make sure we don't give any angles. Yeah, he's got to play the right line here, mate. That's the key, yep. Just quietly Simsy in the third position. Really taking over the game. That's on the a luxury to have him. Yeah, I think a very good question for you, Sam, if you like. How important is the battle between each position and getting on top of your direct opponent? That's all you've got to really worry about, to be honest, mate. you just got to make sure you like any sort of sport, you play a role, no matter where it is. If you third is on heat, as Michael Sims has drawn a back toucher there, can make all the difference in the game, mate. Shouts of Mike Wazowski as he got after that one as well. Wazowski. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Wazowski. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dave Perro, couple down. That's very funny. Big moment here for Dave. Again, not much to play at. Just needing to use all his experience and knowledge of this surface to try and draw the shot. And it's come on out at least, so there's still two, but a very difficult two to get at, so. Black Nan clearly didn't get the memo earlier that there's no more cricket chat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did when you elbowed me in the ribs before when I went down that line, so. Yep. Well, I'm happy to talk about it, but <laughs> there's other BB employees who may not be. Yeah, I wonder who that is. <laughs> oh, so, well, this could be the perfect shot, is he? Oh, Frankenstein. that is so good. He's nearly <laughs> sliced the jack, but he's missed it. And <laughs> so good. It was almost not so was, good. He's looking to sit the shot bowl <laughs> if he was one down. It's an absolute horn. He's done well anyway. It does count. Well, he's, but he hasn't opened up any targets. You know, and that's why I, I just... Could have gone very wrong, but it, it was the perfect shot in the end. <laughs> just in behind us here is the clubhouse, and they've actually got the stream on the big screen, and Stixie's just having a look at the big screen as to how he's missed the jack. <laughs> oh, good effort there from Dave. Wasn't far away, but... Still nothing really for Ash to play out here. It's going to have to be a draw. As we see Daniel on club uh, coming up on the screen. I saw uh, Andrew, the gen the CEO of Daniel Club, putting a comment in there. Thank you, Andrew. It's nice to see you on the stream. And, of course, thanks to Daniel for continuous strong support with Bowls B. Like Nan, wondering if they'll both score over 30 there in that Jones Fisher rink. I'll tell you what, didn't go over 30. That was Sri Lanka's innings the other night. Oh, I wasn't meant to say that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's actually quite interesting. The um, There are now some singles happening on the Moody Valley rinks more so than MCC. So clearly, Moody Valley are able to win more ends, but when they're dropping ends over on the Fisher rink, they're dropping them quite big, which is why there's a four-shot deficit, but... They're having a big chat in the middle of the green. Yeah, a few team conferences we've seen already tonight. It's really starting to even up here on the overall now as well, mate. 
Yeah, well, I think maybe we should have a... Brad, you and I, maybe just have a bit of a team chat in the commentary booth. Just a bit of a reflection of the Reset, first. reset. A bit of a reset. When we got talking about cricket and Jimmy was in, I thought we'd stay away. We'll grab, a, grab a couple and we'll see you in ten minutes. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll keep you posted because Asheron's on the mat here and he's got a bit of work to do, mate. He's a few down. Yeah, this is a big moment here. If he can play a, a telling bowl here, it could just switch the momentum of this game. Across the big board, too. Beautiful line for the shot. I think he'll be happy with that attempt to correct on it for the next. Yep. So Nathan, a nice position here, holding three. Has it still a full or so of room to throw a fourth one in? Like we've said, Lloyd, no matter what happens, crucially doesn't leave anything. Fash to work off with his last. Sammy. Oh, he's not going to leave anything to work off. Uh, oh, has that shot. opened a, a running shot on the other hand? Yeah. Is that now an option? Dave, have you a close look? And Ash was going to jump on the mat to draw that, but... It's a tough draw. It is a tough draw. We've seen kind of eight bowls before go without much success. Dave's just said... Let's have a look at that angle. So, going to be a very interesting little call here. Has that bowl, as good as it is, opened up an opportunity for Ash Rowan with his last team? I think it could be three or four, so that matters. Yeah, so, it's probably the first time we've seen... A multiple at the head with the skip walking back to the mat. Now, if there's been chances to make numbers, this is probably the first end where there's been a number and a skip's got to cut down to reduce. So we'll see what he can come up with. It's a great call, isn't it? There's a lot of pressure on this ball from Ash because we can see the overall 31-35. 4-6 on the rink. A number here could be very important. Forehand, Lloyd. Yeah, he's, he's going for it. He's looking for this gap through Nathan's last bowl. Just swing weight. He's having a look, Sammy. Is it going to hold? Busy underneath, and for the first time in this game on this rink, we'll see a multiple of some sort to the Valley crew. We've already we taken two or have taken three out already? Yes, three out I think it is, Sammy. So this is for four. Yep. And I'm thinking it's four. And it is four. So it is four to the valley there. Four shots. So I thought Lynchy might have just given a chance. But other than that, I would say it was almost the perfectly constructed in from valley. Question for you here, mate, as we approach end nine. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can see a few rinks running a little bit far behind, a few rinks jumping ahead. But Mooney Valley, every game last year, including the Division One final, did have a break, elected to have a break. This year, obviously, in Premier Division, there are no breaks. How does that change this middle part for Mooney Valley? Yeah, interesting to see what happens now in the next sort of half an hour because you feel like they've got a chance here just to... Sneak away, and they have. They've put the mark, probably a game high margin now. Yeah. So, and it feels like across the rink they're just starting to lift, noise starting to pick up a little bit. And they're, they're aware of that as well, yeah. that's happening. So, yeah. any chance they get to jump on the opposition and put them on, put them under it. Under the palm, they're going to. So, yeah. yeah, next half an hour, really, really important here for MCC just to level things out and wrestle back a little bit of momentum. Mm. I think that's going to be the barometer for any side that plays Mooney Valley. And obviously, there's a few other sides you can think of in Premier who are similar, like, say, Melbourne. Um, very similar in terms of that they, they do have a lot of energy. They, they, they feed off that enthusiasm and that noise. So I think it'll be a barometer to see if you can get them quiet, then you might be able to get on top of them. Playing very well now, Riley. Yeah, good correction. Pretty happy with his work there as well. <laughs> <laughs> well no, he has. He's found it well, yeah. He's 
started to come good. It's actually my favourite part of Mooney Valley. I saw it last year in Division 1, is that when they play a good one, they don't just celebrate, they celebrate. Yeah. You know, I just think I saw Chippies <laughs> on one knee lifting the hat up to Simsy as he puts a ripper in. They, they just, I love the way they play the game. I really it's do. good, it's passionate, it's good energy. They combine very well at the front, you know, they, they, they kind of set up heads, you know, we talk about one on, one behind, and certainly at this level you kind of need two within the area, kind of two behind as well most times, but these two at the front really combine very well. Super and Tris still a very new combination, first time they're playing together as a lead and second, so it takes a little bit of time to develop that connection, as you have with thirds and skips, you have it with leads and seconds. Now this rink that seems to be the one that's starting to push away. We've got tight rinks across the board. This one, the six shots, and the next rink as well, the Nelson Mortimer rink, also six shots. I think they're going to determine the overall result. I don't think the other two rinks are going to have too big a gaps, but I reckon on one of these rinks, Moody Valley are going to look to really put the scoreboard pressure on. Good call, Lloyd. Still not a breath of wind here, still perfect conditions. Still a lot of bowlers out there without jumpers on Sammy as well, so clearly comfortable in what they're doing. As I think the Gallagher rink on the far rink might have just taken back the lead with a few shots, so that's really tightening up over on the far rinks. Sticks, or just yeah, just yeah, good so speed. Good. The boys are after a clear run. Then Bowie Perot jumping in the Facebook comments. Good evening, mate. Thanks for jumping on the stream. Had a question there from the lovely Barb Vaughan, who is a very hard working club mate of mine, saying, What bowls is Sims playing with? I'll try and get some information out for you, but looking at their design, it does seem to be an aero. But I'm not quite sure which one is, so I'll, I'll put the feelers out for you, Barb, and I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> Kane is up by six at the moment, but only after seven ends. These two rinks, seven ends and eight ends, both six shot leads, both scored 4 10 to Mooney Valley, but as we said, very, very early days. So there'll be a few twists and turns in this story, no doubt. They are aerodynamics. <laughs> Sam Rogers has <laughs> come up with that. How good is that? <laughs> He's just uh, yeah, done some very good detective work, Barb, to find out that they are aerodynamics. Detective work from the commentary booth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's very impressive. <laughs> Dick. Okay, back on this game now. Again, another conversation here. It's been a type of game where there have been a lot of angles to think about, so they're very measured in their approach. Yeah, a lot of the time there's been sort of a couple of bowls, not by design, just sort of foot, two foot short of the draw and sort of making sure they pick the right hand with the right spa speed is going to be crucial. Mm. It's right speed, I think, that's, that we've noticed has been the real killer, hasn't it? And you've got to get that speed right. Yeah, the boys are pretty happy with this yeah, one. Very happy. Really. It's 15 behind, yeah. MCC had a lot of representation at the back there, so it splits all of them up fairly well. 
Yeah, I think at this standard, um, you know, with the green of this standard as well, the, the line is going to be pretty consistent from all players, but it's the ones who can, I guess, jump on that beautiful speed and play a bowl with a foot when it needs to be played with a foot or a yard when it plays a yard that's going to be the difference. And that angle now has changed a little bit from the last bowl that Sticks played. So I think Lynch is still going to just try and draw another second here. Somehow, Sam. Okay, so opting backhand, I thought it might have been possibly forehand around those bogs, but. Oh, they asked for a clear run. He was pretty much on the jack and. So, if, if I'm correct, anyway. yeah, I, I'm interested by that, that response from the Valley Boys. So, if I'm correct here, Sam, I'm looking at the backhand trail could be a pickup for the Valley here. Do you see that backhand kind of a couple feet? Yeah, I do. I'm not sure what it is already, whether it's one or whether they're already holding two or three. It's sort of... Just looking at the angles from where we're sitting, it might be two? I think it has to be two, but I just... This last one might count. Yeah, is there a... just can't see if there is an MCC bowl in that pack of five just directly behind the jack. And I was seriously excited about that, and if that, that's the case, I'll see why. Yeah, so that, I'm seeing this, this this period, this patch about a metre and a half behind all being valley, but yeah. I can't see how you get to it now. Ash's so. last one has made it really, really difficult now as well. Yeah, albeit it's on, and they're looking hard at that, that trail, but I just think, I just don't think it's there. I think they've got one. I think you've now got to try and maybe get a second or a third. I, I can't see how Ash can afford to play any weight. No, I don't think so. I wonder if there's any chances here, if it is only one, whether this wing bowl here, the right hand of Stevie Moore is holding them out of anything. Yeah. If I want to play the wrong weight, they're going to also clip that in for one down. So, so there's one it'll thing just be a backhand draw here for Nath. Yeah. We'll say about Lynch, if there is a chance, he tries to take him, doesn't it? Yeah, he doesn't muck around. How's he gone? Oh, I don't think he could have played that much better. And those have actually <laughs> fell back in, so... I think it's at least two now. Oh, pointed. Hang on. Nope. There was the point from Dave that said hit that. And Nash said, hang on a sec. Yeah, I don't know if there's a, a lot of danger. I think a rip on up the forehand, that's well protected, but... Whether they're willing to take that chance that something may go amiss. Yeah, well, they need to score, don't they? I mean, that's that's probably going through their heads right now. Is we've got to try and score here. I don't want to drop that number, but I, I agree with you, Sam. I think there's less danger. It's always on the knee. Yeah, play that backhand with speed. It drifts underneath, so... Valley, really, as we said, Lloyd, they've picked up a bit of momentum here, especially on this stream rink. They've picked up a four the previous, and... There goes one. Dave's got to give away at least two. Let's have a good look at this third. He's going to throw the measure on the third one, so... Good pickups. I'd be wobbling my hands, Sammy, on the measure. Get a bit nervous. Get a bit nervous when you're doing it. <laughs> People are looking, you see, if you... Bit of noise was definitely there from Chippies, who I think is a bit of barometer for, for Nathan Lewis for Mooney Valley, a bit of a... Likes to get up and about and have a bit of fun. What was it in the end? I reckon it was three. Three. Now out to a nine shot lead, but with 12 ends still to play. So this end, Sammy, we had end four marks. I'm now saying end 10. Becomes very important for MCC to win this end. Doesn't have to be a big number. Obviously, ideally, 
a number would be great, but they must score this in and stop the run of shots against. Next door, Russell Green Jr's put two on the jack, so pressure's back over there. They're tightening up 5-10 now. Of course, Simsy's been doing a lot of damage over there and he's still got two bowls in, so nothing is safe there as Tristolan on cue. We said MCC needed to perform this end and she started off very, very well. What a shot, skill team! I'm sure you heard that skill, she just played a bomb. Well, there's a heap of noise and then a sort of brief silence for two or three seconds to see if the result had gone the way they were after or not. And yeah, but sure did. Yeah, as I said, I thought you know the Gallagher ring started to come back a little bit and were able to get to the lead, but I think Skills just put the jack in the ditch and sat on it. So great, great shot. And Tris now has a chance to really put some pressure onto Jack coming in as a second. And she's coming to a good home there, so big moment here for Jack, who's performed very well, I think. As we mentioned earlier in the week, or early in the, should I say, the, the, the string, uh, great shot there from Jack on cue. Uh, this Lynch rink was the best performed Mooney Valley rink and very, very dangerous combination to come up against. And they're continuing their good form through the first nine ends and we can see why they started off the season so well last week. Yeah, they finished strongly as well last week, boy. They picked up a seven I think on the on the last end seven yeah in fairness I think opposition were sort of chasing a number for the overall oh, I see I see which contributed out of it was a 36 to 10 rink win for this rink last week yeah well I just want anyone who's listening to know if I ever lose by more than about 10 it's because I was chasing sevens uh, so just want to safeguard myself there Two great guys. shots Jack Thompson he's He's locked in this, especially this backhand going this way now. Yeah, and I think late. tricky side as well, this backhand going away. I think last time we saw it was quite difficult. So we've sort of, we've sort of touched on whether how deep Valley can go this season. Can they make top four? How deep can they go if they make finals? MCC, can they crack the top four this season, mate? They missed out by two points last year making finals can they make that step what's their side looking like yeah well I think the first thing I think we all agree on is that any one of these eight sides can win it that's just how close the competition is this year and there's no doubt in my mind that that's still true however I did take notice of the BV tippers including yourself picking them uh, to finish on the bottom this season uh, do we tip them on the bottom? Yeah, I think we did. I think we did top fours. Uh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top, top fours, four, top fours. So, well, they weren't there yeah. anyway. So, <laughs> um, you know, they, they've improved from last year. They finished four. I know internally they're certainly hopeful of, of having a real crack at the title. Um, but again, it's just going to come down to how quickly their new players can blend with the old, and is there going to be enough time in a fourteen-week season to make that chemistry happen? That's going to be the real question for me. Of course, one of the biggest breakers of chemistry are losses. So the more losses they have, particularly early, the more the doubt comes in, the more you have internal fighting or anything like that. So these games are going to be really important for MCC to, to get into the season. Because it doesn't help when you've got... <laughs> Kane Nelson playing absolute whoppers next door. He sits a bowl. Seemed to be on top of the jack here, clean for a couple. Big high fives. Have you seen any weaknesses in the Mooney Valley side tonight, Sammy, that you could point out? Not as of yet. Obviously, the score's been a bit open-ended, a couple of rings across on Dylan's rink, but they just seem very 
well rounded and across the board, mate, all the way from lead to skip. Yeah. Especially on the stream rig, we talked about it earlier, everyone just playing their role. So back end running here from Dave. Big shot. Momentum changing shot. It's on its way. It's close. Oh, just finding the gap. I think what's impressed me most about Mooney Valley on this rink in particular is coming onto an away venue and their line has been brilliant. Probably testament to the green and the conditions as well, mate. It's sort of allowed for quality, consistent bowls, and they've really started to build the heads really well in the last four or five hands. No exception here. Plenty of viewers tuning in from interstate and overseas. Phil jumping on from South Wales. Colin from Queensland supporting the Valley. Ends up falling the hole there. Probably ideally was looking to just work off Triz's bowl, but it's come through a really good home. It gets them the backest as well there, yeah. Lloyd. Yeah. Spoke a bit about it, didn't we? If you're going to miss that shot, finishing in that good home, and uh, it's in a great home with Dave. I think still, sorry, Ash is going to attack here. It's down. Gap again, so I do wonder with the pace, maybe it's holding up a little more yeah, than they're I expecting. Don't know. So, something similar from Nathan, I reckon. Yeah, so ideally, he's going to try and work off and make sure he sort of gets into the count here. Good opportunity. I think there's got to be a little monkey on Ash's back right now with that gap being left there. If it's there again, you know, he's, he's going to be thinking about it, I would say. I mean, I know he's a super player, so probably for, for him he's not. But, you know, there's certainly that gap is going to come to the mind with more pressure. Oh, he's turned it twice onto the line. Very happy with that. So changing the look. So now Ash has got to change something in the shot that he played. He can't just correct on the last, which we knew he was going to do. He's now got to have a look at other angles and reconsider the shot. Uh, brilliant skipping and brilliant execution from Lynch. He's turned it onto the line and may even count there for... Maybe sneaking for four. What is he playing here? Oh, it, yeah, I mean, the, probably the Whatever most... Whatever you choose, it's not <laughs> easy, is it? It's the most damaging bowl on this rink. It's probably that one where Ash is right in front of it now. Because he could play a great shot and hit that bowl and get absolutely nothing. Yeah, Nate's got the backest bowl as well, so... By the way, it seems so valid in a good position to score here. I wonder if he might just go bigger the front one and... Try and get it through the pack and get that jack moving somewhere. Yeah, I think it's a good call. I think he's I think he's got to run the Gordon here and he's got to try and get through this with some serious pace. And he has. He's close to well. the front one. <sighs> awesome Clips it. It's another three by the looks of it, Lloyd. I mean, ultimately, the shot that he was playing, it needed to hit that front bolt straight in the middle. Otherwise, it wasn't going to work, was yep. it? So, yeah, you, you feel for Ash in that time because there wasn't much on. And it's another number for this Mooney Valley rink.
Still a lot of time in this game, though, isn't there, really? Oh, it's a while. We're only halfway through here, and the ring next door only threw nine heads themselves, so... Yeah. That three pushes it pushes it back out to... Oh, 11 shot margin on the big board, but... Yeah. Yep, plenty of holes still to play here. Riley sticking with this. Sort of three-quarter length, and he's playing good. Good lines, and he's... Wade's been really good with at least one of his bowls has been sort of a foot in behind every chair, every time. Yeah, it's a great call, Sam. I, mean, I think it's a really important call because that's causing some difficult shots to be played when it gets to the back because they're owning a really dangerous part on the green almost every end because the front half of Moody Valley are just piling bowls into that scoring zone. So, you know, they, they're doing a really, really good job in putting pressure on. Say BCIB popping up on the screen there, Sammy. Good supporters of bowls. Lovely people at BCIB as well. We love it? BCIB. Yeah. Got um, the great man Steve Glasson coming out to our club to have a chat to us. So uh, great supporters of the game and obviously of the Premier Division here in Melbourne. That's awesome, Dougie. Awesome, Doug. Picking up the weight on that one, Tris. Looking across the, the rinks. Gallagher Skilton rink is all square at the moment, as you can see on your scoreboard. Dale and Snapper have slowed their scoring rate down. There's another great bowl there from Jack. Important shot here from Super. Uh, and next door, the Sims and Mortimer rink is a slight advantage to Sims. But there's not much in that game at all, I can tell you, as I glance over occasionally. Starting to see the bowls and the heads really tighten up across the board. Certainly the Mooney Valley front end at the moment are in control in the front. So players of this standard don't stay down for very long. Jack puts another one in there. We will see a response from MCC. I guarantee you these two at the front are too good to not come back at the two Mooney Valley front two. So we'll see and wait for that moment. That could be third shot there, so. He's done it again. No <laughs> way. The clapping is for Kane Nelson, who I tell you, he's put the two fingers in the end as that bowl's halfway around the ground. He said, listen here, Victorian pennant. If you think this is tough, wait and see what <laughs> yeah. I've got to give you. I love it, by the way, Sammy. I think it's great to have an injection of players that we don't see, you know, every week. One of the things I've said quite often about um, BPL haven't been a part of it is that awesome you know, it's always nice to see I guess the next generation of players like Nelson being a part of the best streams and the best games and we've got a few new new boys testing out Victorian Premier for the first time including Kane here tonight Jake Rin coming down playing for Melbourne Nick Cahill back for another season this time in Clayton Colours yeah, really excited to see how that's going to work. Obviously, the firepower of Bester and Tash, and then you you mix it with, with Nick Cahill, who is one of the premier... Well, great shot here from Dave. Much-needed shot there from Dave. Yeah, wasn't it? What? Absolutely. Still a chance here for... 
Brad to clip this hair out. Um, Just over draw speed. Yep. Yeah. Who's your pick of the, I guess, the flying bunch? Obviously, you've got Deer Park, which has got the best players in the world playing for them. But I like the South Australian feeling you oval as well. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? they got a good little crew together. Craig Mills and Nathan Black and yeah. James Zeller as well all coming down to play. Shot sticker. That's still one to Dave there, so. Yeah, once again, though, Benny Valley just doing a good job of getting another one in the head, mate. And they've done it very well all games. Now the question is, is there an angle to Dave's bowl, which there is. So clearly another bowl that doesn't open up any angles. He's switching hands here, which is clearly to avoid that option. But I must, must try and get another one in here, Dave, and back him in to do so. Class player, real class player. Just clearing under. Okay. One thing I'm pretty sure of is Lynchy will not be far away with this. He's going to give it a chance. And the other thing I can guarantee you, Sammy, is that if he gets it, this place will erupt. Oh, it's a... Good try. He's actually ended up getting the outside of that. Oh, and possibly turn it in for another there. I, I can't see him being unhappy with that now. That does open up for mine a direct inside of Dave's bowl to the other one for a number. So I think Lynch is not going to be too disappointed with himself here. Ash is clearly going to try and draw to beat that wing bowl. Try and get a second shot. comes Ash. It's pretty good here, I reckon, Lloyd. Yeah. <laughs> it's a class bowl, isn't it, really? Yeah, that's in probably a third. Yeah, I mean, regardless if it's third, it just does mean if Lynchy gets both of those, it's, it's, it's less of a punishment, isn't it? Yep. So. They're screaming out for a number here as well, MCC. They'd be very, very happy with a three or a four. So, over to you, Lynchy. I just got a feeling Nathan might play a real big one here just to ensure the momentum stays with them. Giving it a, a nice chance. Lloyd looking for a turnout and sticks his bowl. <laughs> uh, couldn't have got much closer, I don't think, at all. Could he, Lloyd? Just needed one roll would have been enough, I think, in the end. What he was so excited about was because he nailed that speed, but did turn quite sharply there. So did they, some, some of them are still turning on this yeah. forehead coming back in this direction. Kind of that late turn, you know, a lot of bowlers will know that late turn, they'd be all talk about it, you know, oh, my bowl turns really late, but that seemed to be a really late turn when the speed came off. So, barring an absolute disaster, MCC. Going to stop the run of ten shots in a row, and they're going to pick up a multiple themselves, and yeah. probably more importantly, they're going to get the mat back yeah. and yeah. change it right up. Triss has already popped the mat down as yeah. far back as possible. I mean, look, obviously a three would be great here, but and it is, it is a three, so a great shot from Ash and Dave there, but most importantly, get the mat back. Now yeah, the comments and the viewers are all over it. Question of seeing a lot of mobile phone action on the green, but our viewers, <laughs> they don't miss a thing. I'm aware that all games across Premier A and Premier Reserve this season are being live scored, Lloyd. Yep. For the first time. Not Barrier. on Snapchat, not Barrier. on TikTok. <laughs> Well, that's the that's the big change up. The big change up is Matt back 
to the middle. We are looking, it's probably about two metres past, three metres past the middle minimum, I would say. So it's probably about yep. 23, I think, Sammy. Got to refocus from both sides here because if Mooney Valley can win this end, then there's a bit of where do I go from MCC, isn't there? Yeah, big pick up there. Gets the margin back to 1 to 10. Oh, well, Lloyd. Doesn't worry for Riley at the moment. He's playing really well. Chris looks a lot closer this time. Chris, she looks a lot... Oh. There is, a, there is still that little bit of late turn, isn't it? We've seen it a couple of times from both sides. The ball's just dying away. How about that, Sammy? Leading, new length. How about that? Yeah, well he's... Been in the area most of the night, to be honest, mate. He's, his weight's been pretty good. Even when he's missed, he's been that sort of foot, two foot past the jack, which is really important. He's been in the area every time, so... It's been backed up pretty well by Jack Thompson, who, for the last few weeks ago, in this direction on the backhand, has played superbly. Yeah. Really, really has. <laughs> on cue. Jack adds another one. I think Super likes this one out. He's he's changed. Yeah, he got after it straight doesn't, away. Doesn't go after many, and he's gone after this one. He liked it a lot, and I tell you why. Oh, why not? The jack around the corner for oh. another shot. Thank you. Could that be the shot of the day? We need a name for shot of the day, Sammy. I was thinking about it. I was thinking we might need a, some sort of you know sponsor for yeah. the shot of the day. Yeah. The Batoki Ham. Batoki Ham <laughs> shot of the day. If anyone knows anyone from Batoki. Get on the phone to S. Rogers and uh, let's get Betocky shot at the Betocky M shot of the day. And oh, <laughs> oh, could it be? There's your new shot of the day. Could it be the new Betocky M shot of the day? <laughs> that is it. That is, I mean, I, <laughs> that is such a good shot. It is such a good shot. From a moment where it seems like maybe the pressure valve's releasing a little bit from MCC, and he comes in and he trails a bear jack around a corner. And you think he was happy about it? Yeah, played superb weight. He hasn't played too many actually forehand coming in this direction, which probably makes it even even more impressive. And bit of noise from the Saints, just recognising they got to work a little bit harder to try and get back into this contest here. Can't see anything apart from the back of Ash Rowan's head on this one, so I apologise. I'll give a little bit of a clip over the head. Dave Harrow. This is Dave's best bowl for the game, so well done, oh. Ash. <laughs> Another but We've had three hands that no. have given away. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you're right, Sammy, what you said was that I think MCC, and I guarantee you MCC aren't going to back away from this challenge. They've said now is the time for us to up our level, and we've just seen the best bowls from Super and Dave and that end. So what can Sticks now do? Oh, that was not far away at all. Boyd. She had some clear and, and that's you know, all I had to do with that. Right. What I love about him is that he just, when he misses, they're finishing in good spots. Once again, he's missed by millimetres, but he's in a good home.
<laughs> and another ripper from Dave. And what an end of bowls. This has been the heads just about changed over with every bowl. If anyone's questioning where you'd want to be on the Friday night, I know Better Harms and Gardens on. I know there's probably a good movie on, you know, another channel, but forget that. Watch your Friday night premier division because when Dave and Sticks are playing bowls like that, why wouldn't you? Really seeing some more noise across the board from MCC. They, they reckon they're a sniff here. They reckon they're a chance. They are, mate. They've picked up a tuna. Scotty Mortimer, that re keeps in touch. And Another couple on the Brendan Gallagher already can yep. get back within five shots here. And, uh, Magic Mike Haig on the far rink is high-fiving in the bushes. He's that happy with his <laughs> shot. Um, so it is. It, there's definitely a moment here. And, and Sammy, you tell our, our, our guests, our, our viewers, what is the approach from the other three MCC rinks? They know this rink's probably going to be one of the last ones off. At the moment, they're nine shots down. Is the aim just win your rink? Is the aim push to score from a 16 perspective? What are the other three rinks thinking? Well, it's still another one to go into Dale Jones' score there. The margin's back to three shots on the big ball, mate. So just play I don't think ball. there's anything out of the ordinary still at this stage. There's still heaps of, heaps of ends left. Back your rink to keep it nice and tight. I think so. I think especially... Brendos and Dale Jones is right more than doing their job. Dave with a few big ones here and yeah, this recall of a sudden possibly about to change momentum again. Yeah. Well, not short here, Lloyd. No. I thought for a second it might just peel around the corner, but I think it's... It stood up and it almost half yeah, went to four in. It did, didn't it? But I think if that had happened, uh, Ash might have been throwing something through a window somewhere, but it didn't. Uh, so the call here is let's get rid of that, that dangerous wing bolt. Let's uh, try the jack around the corner. moment here from Ash. Well supported by his team. Can he add another? Look it's at this Ben home now. Oh, that's turned a mile late, Lloyd. Yeah, it's had not it? It's unbelievable, isn't it? All right, so what do we got on here? The back is, is one down. Uh, don't think there's any chance that he hits this and the weight doesn't go. Does he try and play a meter on to try and push it back to sticks? It's a big weight. Yeah, very interesting. The call there from Lynch straight away was be nice. He knew when he hit that head, there was a lot of things that could go wrong and, and similarly things that could go right. It's a two from MCC, five shots and two ends, Sammy. Pick up, Sammy. I believe it's a one-shot game overall. Would you say that's correct? Correct. That's all corrected up to date. And no surprise, Tris has rolled pretty much the exact same length as to what was just played. Play 
Had a very good end last end, did uh, Riley or Dougie. Um, see whether we can continue to put pressure on as he has for most of the game. And uh, another very handy start. Much better looking speed here from Triss. Is she going to run out? No, unfortunately not. He's pretty good again. He always needs to run it out. Yeah, definitely no doubt there's, it certainly has stopped that finish yeah, except for that. It really did. Yep. The other one that just went. I don't know what happened there, Sammy. Yeah, even Ash's last bowl previous had absolutely turned more late. I think it might be this backhand side that most players are electing to play could be holding more. Yeah, rather than the, the other side, which did ha does have a little bit of hope going the other way. He did mention earlier this direction is it can be fractionally slower, yeah. playing back in this direction as well. Yeah, he's, he's played very well, Jack. He's, he really has complemented the performance of Riley yeah. exceptionally well. Back to each other superbly. Jack's played awesome. Must be their under-18 pairs championship <laughs> of all those years ago that you in <laughs> investigated. I'm hanging on to this. <laughs> Super. Oh, nice little handy little flick in for shot, perhaps. Yeah, he had better speed there. Gave himself more of a chance. Play this well again here, Lloyd. Needs to get all the way back down now. And yeah, that's the shot, says, says Lynchy. Yeah, nice ball. It's great to see, isn't it? You know, the junior program working up through it, finding a way into a Premier Division side and performing on a Friday night as well as these guys are performing. It's very impressive. Might mean you might make a bowler one day soon. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. Just about to mention there seems a slight, slight lull over this game. Feels like sort of recognition it's MCC worked their way back into the contest. <laughs> and then it's just about to fire up again as we <laughs> heard into the last 30 ends. So I think that's maybe why they did elect for the break because you can kind of ramp up as you get to the break, ramp up as you come after the break. There's less of this kind of lull where the tempo goes out of it, if you like a bit. Interesting that we mentioned that, and since we have, I don't recall, Moody Valley may have picked up a one on the far rig. That's all they've scored overall since we mentioned that about 20 minutes ago. It's outstanding commentary, isn't it, that right there? Oh, well, relax. <laughs> through. Alright, can Dave repeat his heroics of last end with his second bowl and draw the shot? He's had a clap from Ash, he's excited. Got to navigate this front one. Crashing. It's a bit of a disaster there. I thought as Ash was trying to block the screen, it might have meant that he was putting down another good one, Dave, like last time, but just crashes his own. Sticks here, just needs two foot off in speed. That'll do it. That'll do it. Jack's in behind the Jack. Just to make it even. Trish 
for you, Farage. What is he? Do you reckon Lloyd is it oh, the hands two of or? I think it must be two. And he, as you can see from this picture, oh. as it now falls, I mean, there is no sign of that Jack. So, you know, splits out to the right of screen. It's against, splits out to the left of the screen. Could be a raffle. Looking to draw as close as possible here. He's on it all the way through. Does it help? Yeah, well, it blocks any option of weight up on the back end if he wants to rip one. And his own bowl nearly blocks the draw on as well, so. I think the challenge with the other hand, you see the Sticks bowl and uh, Riley's bowl just waiting there. I've been impressed with the way that Mooney Valley MCC got within one shot, but they've now pushed back to six. So, as you would know, Sammy, in many sports, catching up is half of the job, but then the ability to take over and get a lead is even harder. Riley's on the way in, gets a couple of turns out of it. What's Ash going to do? Oh, I was about to ask you the same question because I've got absolutely <laughs> no idea. There doesn't seem to be a lot on apart from maybe just dead drawing and if you get second shot that might just be the best option on this end. Yeah, I mean, there doesn't really seem to be a path in that's risk-free. I think he's, he's probably thinking, let's get to that green and yellow bowl in the case that Lynchy does trail it. And if he does, well, we'll only go, you know, one down rather than be... Or at least make that shot harder for Lynchy as well. Yeah. I, I think the line's good enough. Just sit that bowl's the aim, I think. Yeah. Just overplayed it for speed. So we know the way that Lynchy plays. He's going to try and attack this. He's looking at either, as we saw with that hand, inside of the yellow gets out that second shot. There's or, heaps of options here, yeah. Lloyd, yep. There's good angles as well. Back off the inside of Riley's bowl on the backhand, back to the jack. And as you said earlier on this hand, that's all Moody Valley to the right of the screen. It is. It's a backhand with run. I love this shot. Sammy, it's getting me excited. Oh, the boys are asking for this to hold. It was a bit of a 90 climax, wasn't it, really? <laughs> I think it must have been two, but I'm not sure. Yeah, wait for confirmation. Oh, the way. Rod's going to grab the bat. Oh, I would assume. They're going to go back to that sort of three-quarter length they were playing earlier on in the game where they started to get on top. Yeah, a bit of a mental win there as well. You obviously get get the shots on the board, which is important, but now you're kind of dictating the length again. There clearly is a length advantage here for Mooney Valley on this longer end. There certainly were better heads for MCC in the shorter end. So uh, a bit of a mini win in this context of this game. Have a look at that for a bit of a, a picture there. We've got a lot of green around here on the, <laughs> yes. the stream rink. And <laughs> Playing well was the call from uh, Lynchy there, and I tell you what, it certainly has. Skilsey just shaved a big number there on the yeah, far yep. rink, I think. I think he was down a few. Here comes Tristolan. Yeah, handy start from both leads here. This is setting up to be a good end, Sammy.
That's awesome, Doug. Rolly again. Good bowls in the area and sinks in behind the jack. In the scoring zone, Lloyd. It's a hard place to be a lead sometimes, bowling green, and particularly at this standard. But there's something pretty special about the way that the young man is going about his business, just putting bowls in workable areas every end. Reminds me of you, Sammy, when you go into a bit of a roll. <laughs> A rare occurrence. <laughs> Got Cam uh, watching from Edinburgh, Scotland. Did you give us your best Scottish accent, Sammy? Is nope. that something just no? no? I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> what I can tell you, though, is Alex Gilbert managed to get second shot with his last ball over on the far rink. He's four into the row to. Brendan Gallagher and the co. Yeah, I think it's going to be a clearly an important rink in the aspect of this game. You know, they've had four rinks in a row, so if they can keep that momentum, as Super comes in with an absolute super shot from Super to draw it. Um, you know, if, 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 if Brendan can continue to pile on rink, uh, sorry, end wins, that'll just keep MCC in the game the whole way. this look super he's got this look Sammy Man, he gets after him when he likes them and I'll tell you what he's pretty close again here isn't he I'll tell you what why wouldn't you why wouldn't you get after it because that is just oh, oh. a little bit stiff not to get the inside of that and fooling himself what was he doing going after that shot <laughs> yeah 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 it's good for about fifth shot not sure what the excitement was about Oh, well played. Good head developing here, Lloyd. Big weight from Dale Jones a few rinks after. Everyone's going after bowls and doing a terrible job at it, my ad. And uh, seems to be snappers picked up a, a number there. Is, I'll tell you what, Mike Hago there is <laughs> he's getting up and about for the MCC. He's very happy with his work. Sticks just slightly over with this one. Still nothing in this game, Sammy. There still is nothing in it. I think it's a big board. Anything under six shots going into that last ten ends is anyone's game, really, isn't it? Correct. The boys have updated the board there, so it was just a one to the valley on the last end. But a big number from Snapper helps there. I think he's just picked yeah, up. Yeah, he's picked up a three, so yeah. that re goes to 1917. Here comes Dave Harrow. Dave Harrow. Harrow. Jack just about. Harrow. What it does do, though, is give options for Brad Gibson to search up on the backhand. Yeah, he was quick to call that, Lynch. He wanted to too. His eyes lit up there a little bit, but outstanding bow there from Dave. See what Sticks has been doing. Admittedly started on fire and then he's hadn't had to do much with the front two firing. I was going to say, it's that he hasn't done a lot. He hasn't. Yeah. He needed to. Very close. Tell you what, though, he's done something now, Sammy. Oh, and in behind the jack as well. <laughs> he's done something now. The perfect shot inside of the green, onto the other, onto the jack. Here comes Dave with another good looking shot here, Sammy. It's got to be close. <sighs> I know he could have got a lot closer to clipping that bowl out. 
not actually missing it. A super attempt. Yeah. It's a it's a very, very good head of Lord Bowes, this one. And let's see what Lynchy can do. I'm guessing he's gonna look for that front toucher here. Really pile the pressure on. Any jack movement either way is not great. single on the rink next door to almost a Jacob Nelson then. Whoa. <laughs> Don't know if you get trouble if you did crew. that. So hard to just sneaks out a little. Ash has got after this one. He's, he's enjoying the line of this. Probably just fractionally under in speed I think was probably what did it there. Oh yeah, that was... Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> nearly a four or two more was good. I think Nathan will be pretty happy with the speed he played with the first. Doesn't want to play anymore and play the shot for Ash. Can draw up to this white bowl and fall back. Just underplayed it, so Ash probably looking for what? An extra two foot here, Lloyd? Yeah, correct. Splash that jack correct. is a few. And he doesn't want to have any sort of big contact on it, so he's, he's looking for that perfect weight. Is it going to hold on in time? He's played the right way. Mm. It's just ducked on him and ducked more than I think he thought it was going to there, so. It was a big shot by Brad Gibson and Valley pick up consecutive ones. Just sneak out on this rink after it looked like the momentum was going to shift back in MCC's favour. Yeah. Skilts in the far rink again. Clearing out some bowls in a bit of trouble and able to clear out bowls. They've gone everywhere. And how many is left on the green? Five? Five bowls with one bowl left to come from the skips. But right. again, he's under, under pressure. a little bit shorter this time, Sammy just... I was about to mention that, that he hasn't rolled it as far as they have been playing. So we'll see how the end develops. Still keeping an eye on that firing Lloyd. Alex Skilton one down, has about a foot of room to draw the shot. He might have sailed through. Yeah, I think he's only one down, but I tell you, he was in a lot more trouble than that again. Two ends in a row, Skilton's able to reduce the impact to one, but Gallagher keeps ticking ends over as Truce comes here with a brilliant shot. Oh, we just went away, didn't it? There's no way of it. So I thought it was going to happen. Uh, I like that you were confident, though. you got to go confident. <laughs> I was looking at it, I thought, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a good shot. <laughs> Don't have to be right, just have to be confident. Handy start there, handy bolt. Still a good crowd around, Sammy, I must admit. There's still a lot of people at the back of the rink there and a few cold ones inside. There's a, there's there is a, a uh, former MCC players around the ground as well as we yep. look across and made their way down. Yep. Great man, Russell Green Senior said I had to give him a shout out, so that's done and off the list. So. <laughs> Tick that one. Yep. Oh. Starting 
going to be a bit of a challenging head here. We need Super really to at least get past, if not close. Anything kind of loaded up here on this open hand could make it very tricky for the guys to come. What Ash said there, Sammy, is we just need a few options here. So he's obviously identified. There's a little bit of a, a, a tough head developing. See what you can do, Super, he says. Yeah, very good shot. Two for correction here from Jack. That'll be the shot. Could be two with the wing bowl there from Riley. Between that and Super's last bowl. Any correction on that first delivery will give the shot to MCC. His weight looks very good, but just... Unfortunately, just crashing into the front again. A lot of thing bowls in the way. See if he can navigate the perfect line sticks, as he's been able to do so often already. Another couple for Dylan Fisher's rink. That's now tightened up to 19-18. So, with uh, I'll give you one end after the game. With the Nelson rink able to push out to seven, and the other two rinks able to close the gap a fraction, it's now starting to stretch the lead out for Mooney Valley as we get into the final 20 ends of the game. Is there going to be? another turn in this story. Can MCC, with their experience, wanting to get their first win on the board for the season, can they rally and create something special in these last 20 ends? Yeah, they rallied sort of once already when the margin was like this earlier on, but they only got back to level. I don't reckon they ever got ahead at any point, did they, Lloyd? No, spot on, Sam. I think it was one shot that was the closest, which is pretty close, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> but you did call that was the hard part, being able to then push on and get ahead from that situation. And since then, the Valley crew have just drawn it out a little last few ends and regained that. That margin of seven or so shots. Yeah, for, for any other new bowlers or even experienced bowlers getting ready to play their pennant tomorrow, you know, the challenge of and the, and the energy and the and the focus that you have to use to come back when there's a deficit, it's so important to clear your mind, reset, and think about that next stage, which is then trying to overtake the margin. It's the hardest thing to do, particularly when you do expect a response from the opposition, particularly at first class level like this. A few little comments here. One from Tanya is Chip having a good night? Chip's having an outstanding night. I've seen him over there. He's uh, had a lot of good bowls in the areas. Dave Haro might have just taken the shot off the Valley team. And uh, we will say hi to Kane after the game. They've just got their opposition in a bit of a rink meeting. Uh, Mortimer Rink again having a conversation, trying to find that little advantage. Yeah, by far the lowest scoring rink of the night. They've got six, seven ends to... I think it'd be a good job against that rink there in Valleys if they could even that one out as best they could. Yeah. It's 
probably the one, isn't it, that you think if, if MCC is going to win this, they need to, to kind of win that rink, particularly with the winning rink, which is the Gallagher rink, which is seven shots up, only having two ends left. So they're going to be off the green very, very quickly with a lot of ends still to go as Lynchy comes in with big weight. Asking for both bowls. Oh. The other one sticks around. Might have done enough. I tell you what, though, he wasn't far away from the perfect shot. Nathan Lynch again with the aggressive shot. And reality is, he kind of got both, didn't he? A lot of room for Ash to draw this, though, to be honest, Sammy. I think he hasn't been far away on these backhand draws, and this is probably the easiest one he's got, so I'm backing him in completely to, to nail this. Just needs to fall in. Yeah. Oh, oh. it's gone to fall. Oh. But a good look at that, the Valley Boys, huh? Yeah. Yeah, now there's one down was the soft call there from Sticks. Do you have soft calls and long balls? <laughs> score review. Not a fan of the score review system, being a Melbourne supporter. Lynchy looks like he's going big again here. I was going to say, maybe Brad on the cameras could get some sort of VAR set up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's he got here? He loves it. He loves it. Oh, it's a big shot. He gets both the balls out of there. And the crowd goes wild. He's called that a mile out as well, Lloyd. <laughs> I mean, I think they're only holding one with a bit of room to draw, but I tell you what, I love their enthusiasm. I think I should be confident he can draw this off. He was good enough with his last one. Yeah, I mean, he's, he is a top-class player and, you know, typically you'd back him more than I think you'd back against him in this type of situation. So, see what he can do. Pressure's a funny thing. Scoreboard pressure's even more funny. He's out on a good enough line for it. Looks good, Sammy. Looks good from our angle, Lloyd. Looks perfect, Sammy. Yep, did well. Good shot. Yeah, and he's happy. Big There's the moment. Here Big we go. Pump. A little Stand wave up. to the crowd, Sammy. Just, oh, was he waving to us, maybe, and saying, did you see that one on the replay? All right, Sammy, we've seen on the strategy so far. They've gone minimum to the middle. Please tell me, what's their strategy this time? Straight back to the same <laughs> before. <laughs> I was looking whether Ash was going to walk back any further than he was past that. Sort of what, 23, 24 metre marks, what they've been playing. And they, they played it pretty well, to be honest. It was a pretty good head, really. Well, I mistook Kane for Jacob earlier in the stream tonight, but Jacob has jumped in the comments. <laughs> Supporting the Valley and brother Kano, who's going along beautifully. And a big shot was that from Snapper over there, a couple of rings across Lloyd. Yeah, well, for those of for Dylan. Yeah, for, for those of the players who watched the um, the VBL for Mooney Valley, there's no doubt in my mind that Snapper was a barometer for the side, and uh, they love him. And uh, you know, he always plays well when he's playing like he's playing tonight. They get around him. Trist with a good start, good weight is important. And on the far rink, Alex Gilman's been managed to stop the run of five ends in a row for MCC, picking up a two. Have to start their last end. Yeah, Simsy draws the shot that was exposed by the MCC there. There's another drawn shot here from Valley. The Valley have gone up a here, a gear here. Uh, they're holding on every rink. And it's now time for MCC to respond. Notice, Sammy, that the Skilton rink's actually employed the same strategy as the Rowan rink has here, with going short to the middle. So clearly, that's the change up today.
Pretty clear call there from Nath, making sure. Rise up to and beyond the jack here if he misses. I just want to get up all the way. Oh, that's pretty quality leading. Yeah, I think he, I think he's got to go nice and early here. Uh, oh no. Yeah, no, just asking for just over over the uh, over the yard type weight. I actually think you were spot on with Lynch's score, call actually making it really easy for Riley to put a good bowl in there. Yeah. Super with a shot of the day. I had really good positive weight there. Mm. Thompson needing this one to get down underneath the trisses. Oh. Makes contact, but actually turns that one up and covers the jack, so... I think it does help there. I think that, that yellow and green bowl is in a pretty handy position for, for both sides, really, I guess. Ash is called to alleviate that danger. Yeah, so either sneaking past here or working on the inside of Riley's bowl. Just didn't quite have the speed, did he? Yeah, that's all it was in the end, so... You heard inside of Riley's bowl here is good angles. It's probably the only real angle is inside or outside that bowl through the jack, but it's certainly one that's appealing. Come to a good home. I think the last call that was Ash made there, Sammy, was to actually go under that head to the green and yellow, which might be blocked off from Super's last. But if they can clear that bowl out at Jack High, doesn't give Mooney Valley many options, does it? Uh, it doesn't. I just don't know which the best way is to go about it, whether it's still backhand underneath or not. I did say there's a little bit of turn on the backhand as well, which makes it a little bit more challenging. A little more tricky, yep. Last end being played over on the far end. And big shot on the draw by Matty O'Brien, third for Mooney Valley. Drive over there from Scotty's rink, which yeah, didn't missing as well. I think he might be one down. Gallagher's rink's flying, hasn't it? Really, Gallagher's collision's game. It's just mucked around it all over there. Hasn't let his team down very often today when he's been in this type of position, Sticks. He played the perfect weight there and comes to another good home. Bit of a chat here, Sammy. What's going on? What are they talking about? Yeah, just where they... I think they're in a position where a few shots down, if they can... Oh, it's sort of hit them up there by. A few shots by Ryan Bevisui. Playing second over on Dylan Fisher's rink. Um, back to this head, where they can land one of these bowls out. Either Jack or Riley's. Just so it leaves only one Moody Valley ball in the head. Got that on the way in. Well, it's come to an okay home. 
don't think he'd be unhappy with that. There's still a lot of options. Got to be a little bit careful now, Stiggs. Nice speed, but just a fraction wide. Probably forced him to play a wider line that he wanted to because if there's any movement of the jack or halving of the jack, it clearly is against Mooney Valley and probably not too unsatisfied with the one down result at this stage of the game as well. What's the best way to lock the game down, do you think, Sammy? I think with the way the game sort of develops, especially on the stream rink, the front ends have been solid enough. It hasn't given Ash to sort of one maybe early in the game where he had a chance to land a ball out to make a number. But apart from that, I can't recall heaps of opportunities for Ash to make a big number. That's probably been sit out the head. Might just change that. Might be a couple. Yeah, well, I mean, I think, I think if the head stays the same. They're going to have to try and play that Riley Bowl out, surely. Yeah. I think with less than 20 minutes to go, margin back out to 10. Across the board, sort of take those one downs where you can and keep the ends ticking over, I think, Lloyd. Yep. As quick as you can, really. Well, well, it's not the worst. Comes to a spot where if the jack does move, it's more likely to go right of screen. Yeah, they're looking at options now. They're kind of saying yep. that forehand's probably not the percentages, maybe just to beat that wing bowl. As Frederico gets his name called for the... I'm sure not the first time, but just the first time I've seen yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's done many good bowls, but I just saw that one. Oh, dead 17, yeah. <laughs> ah, good shot. All right, so... Pretty sure the indication here from Ash on this backhand, drawing to beat Nath's last one. It's probably, even though the big board is kind of nine, you only need to have a couple shots from each ring. That's all so it's going to take, yep. Certainly no need to panic. But if the chance is there, you want to take them. It's Dale Jones draws the shot back from James. So nice and tight over on the Jones Fisher rink, 2018. Here comes Ling Chi. Just couldn't quite clear the front one, so that'll be one to MCC. So we see this replay. A bowl higher, half a bowl higher, and yeah. he could have made three or four. He had to get less of the front one, and it sneaks up into that little port. Brings the margin to six on this stream rink. Seven on the rink next door, the Nelson Mortimer, two Mooney Valley. Then 2018 Jones versus Fisher in the way of Jones. And 1813, all done. It is 18 14. 14, yep. Yeah, so Brennan Gallagher gets two points on the board for MCC with an 18-14 win. <laughs> Need a big start here from Tris, a big start. I think it's another one to MCC for Dale Jones, so Maybe this could spur a bit of momentum, winning a few wins as a team together. Tristan looks like, I keep saying she's played a good one, I'm not sure, but 
Hey, this time it is a good one. This time it is a very good one. Good start from Riley. But certainly if Trish can play that same speed, ideally she can get the jack. But two goals finishing in that same spot as her first is going to be very, very strong for the MCC rink. And it looks good. Played nice. really good speed, yep. Oh, that's, that's exactly what they're looking for to start this end. Sammy, before a bit of a storm I reckon is going to happen. MCC, seven shots down with 15 ends to go. Their best perform rank to this stage is off the green. Mm. It's going to take something special from someone out there to turn this game around. Super's in the area. Which rink is there? One of the three rinks that stands out the most has been most likely to pick up a couple of consecutive ends. Doesn't have to be big numbers, just three or four ones or twos in a row. Yeah, I guess the Dale Jones, Dylan Fisher have scored numbers, so you'd think that that's probably a chance, but Michael Sims has just played an absolute cracker on the next rink over. And as long as he's doing that, Sammy, I can guarantee you an MCC comeback is going to be tough to do. But still a lot of hands to go. Feels like Aunt Mooney Valley have had control of this match for most of it. Maybe that's because... I guess the live stream has been that case, but MCC have hung around, so if they can just jump up a couple of gears for this last 10, there's no reason to say why they couldn't steal the game. Keeping on the other rigs, Maxi Goldsmith, I'm absolutely you were in there, weren't you? <laughs> I was just going to oh. say, I, I favour the Mini Valley, they've got one here just quietly, Sammy. I'm not sure yeah. what you think, but I think Dave's yeah, going to try to trail it. I was going to say, I still think it will change quite a bit. Still a foot or so of room to draw their shot. I reckon this is fairly close, isn't it, Lloyd? Is he getting all the way down to the oh. jack? <laughs> Beautiful speed, one that, that's got to be it. Yep. Good shot. Yeah, so the head building up here nicely for MCC. Yeah, well, probably uh, one of the, the few the times, I think, for the last few wins where we've seen MCC's head set up being very, very strong compared to Mooney Valley. I think it's probably because Mooney Valley's been such a high standard for most of this game. Correct. A few balls drop short. Now it changes that pressure. is all on sticks and, and, and Lynchy here. So big opportunity to get into this game. They can pick up a number here. It's game on. Yeah, it's just got to make sure he misses in behind. Yeah. If he misses the draw here for Plate. This would be massive, mate. Be massive, mate. Wow. Score. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> we don't have to call the game. Ashron will do it for us. <laughs> but he's right. Having a look. Has he got enough weight to get up there? That'll do it. it That'll do two. I'd also just like to add that I think Kane Nelson is good at bowls, Lloyd, <laughs> just based on what we've seen on the ring next door tonight. Yeah, he's... Um... Oh, and another side toucher there with not a lot of room, mind you. 
he, he, he's a class act. I mean, anyone who's pushing Simsy off the skipping position is clearly a class act, but he seems to be a real, real fine for Valley. And I think one of the reasons why they will make the four this year, I'm putting it out there. Talking of good players, Brad Gibson's been in the area more often than not. Oh. No exception. There it goes, shutting the door. That's a huge bowl. Scotty Mortimer charging down the green on the ring next door. I think he hasn't got it. That was a good shot. That's huge from Brad Gibson. That head was... Well, I just said I thought it was Michael Shimmer, but maybe it was the fact that Brad Gibson's playing three instead of skip this year. That's the, I mean, that was that was an absolute ripping shot. So the front pack of bowls are sort of all a foot, foot and a half out. What do you reckon, Lloyd? Is it a bit of a two-bowl play, sort of trying to open something up for his next, or it does seem it seems hard to draw? I mean, he's got a clear Dave's bowl there, that front green one. The only thing I can kind of say, which is going to get a bit adventurous, but looking at it from our angle, which you can't see on the screen, there is a gap between Styx's bowl and Dave and Triss's behind. Maybe front green onto that to get it out without any jack movement. More weight than not. How's this going to change the shape of the head? <sighs> There goes that green <laughs> that I was moves, saying was there. Yeah, it moves that out of the way. If he can get it here and and push it out without the jack, it's definitely four shots to MCC. Yeah, he's got to play the right way. It's still allowed to turn plus. He's front one as well. Yeah. And of Mind you, Nath still has yeah. another one to draw <laughs> in first. Or he's got two still. It's probably the other problem, isn't it? The, the, the bloke on the map with two more bowls to come. Yep. All right, so the equation's quite simple here, Sammy. Ash is one down. He's got four seconds. He has got one catch-up. So clearly this bowl's got to go out. Yeah, the question is how. Yeah, the shot bowl is... If we say just past the jack, so there is room for the bowl to be clipped out without any jack movement. So this is a tough shot, but it could be huge if it goes right here for Asher on an MCC. Front. Yeah, I mean, it was such a hard shot, wasn't it, to play. It needed to swing, so it had to have less pace, but needed to get the bowl out. So, you know, a difficult, hard shot to execute. Can Lynchy this really, really put hurt some if he could add it in. Yeah. I don't think he's far he's away. Close. <laughs> Not sure, don't <laughs> think so. I reckon Based if it had got in, we would have heard a big noise. So yeah. I'm going to say it's only one, but they're having a look. Just had to fall in. I'm not sure it has. Well, I mean, the fact that they even put a tape on just shows you how good an effort it was, really. Great shot. And the ring next door was it single to the valley, so they'll pick up a couple. Big noise. <laughs> Snappers just uh, followed the jack into the pit for at least one. Well, the jack was at the top of the line and he's put the jack all the way into the ditch and stayed with it. I'll tell you what, I reckon there's about 16 Mini Valley people that got over to snap at a high five in that situation. Yep. Was that two? Including those that finished. Was that two to Lynchy then? Must have snuck in. Oof. There you wow. go. There you go. That could make all the difference. Starting to get to a territory where MCC want to just start putting some ends together.
still only nine shots with uh, ten shots with too many ends to go. Ten ends, but ten shots and ten ends. What's the Lee Matthews rule? Oh, that's that's footy, isn't it? That's a completely different rule. One shot and end, Sammy. More goals and minutes or something along yeah, the lines of that. If that works for Shots and ends? Say the Sammy Rogers rule. Mm. More shots and ends. All right. Truce had a great end last end. Let's see if she can't continue the form and momentum and rhythm. Far away at all. Interesting, Sammy Braden Ellis, of course, who's playing lead over there for the Fisher rink, did play third for Lynch's rink last year, if I recall. Did notice that, yeah. Years. So we have a little stream a little bit, so back to lead, sort of like we've touched on already tonight, just shows the quality of their outfit and well, he's corrected well for speed. So one last push, Lloyd. With ten heads to go, ten shots down. This is it. It's got to just take. It's got to. They're probably going to rely on one of these rinks picking up a number. Yeah, couldn't agree more, Sammy. I think they, it's got to go. Near, they got to go near. You know? yep. They can't wait for the next five ends and hang around. They've got to make a move now, and just see how this young, exciting lineup handles a little bit of scoreboard pressure, a little bit of. I think I think it's going to have to come from this rink as well, yeah. Lloyd. I think the last couple of ends have just shaped up a little more in Moody Valley, uh, Moody Valley MCC's favour. Based off just watching the other couple of rinks that are still going tonight. Yeah. Scotty Mortimer's rink's going to be hard pressed to find a number given the quality of bowls that's been played by Michael Sims and Kane Nelson on the ring next door. Correct. I, I, look, you know, obviously, no disrespect to Lynch, he's a super player, but then the, the next two rinks have got kind of Australian players in both back ends, so it is going to have to be, you would think, this rink that that gets them up and about, and that's exciting because that's the rink we're streaming. Still a beautiful night here at MCC. I'm still standing here in shorts and t-shirts. Sammy got a little bit cold along the way, so he's got a jumper on. But uh, I'm still here in shorts and t-shirts, and it's quite nice. <laughs> All right, so no other side. How about now that Jack just yet? He's going to have the speed. He's looking at it. I think that's going to be enough for now. Well played. Yeah, good yep. shot. Good shot. Ball here for sticks because uh, there really is only one valley bowl in there. So needs to give it a friend. Val's got the right idea going on YouTube up on the big screen. Few shouts from the crowd as well from the MCC. Faithful. Yeah, well, going to be the next few ends. They've stayed around, haven't they? The crowd. Did. <laughs> Danger time here for um. For the MCC on the next rink, there are a few down. I think if that end goes against MCC to Valley, that could be almost the end of the game, Sammy. So.
He tried here from Dave, just needs to land. Brad's last one. Yep, that'll be enough for a couple. Of course, it's getting to the business end, so keep an eye on the other couple of rinks that are still going. Okay, Nelson Rick, they're holding a couple there. That's Nathan Lewis on the jack. No, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> Kay Nelson says, sorry, Chipper. I'm going to take the shot instead and try the jack. Uh, I believe he's tried the jack for five. Uh, so, yeah, big bumps right. here from Scotty. What even be? Could be six. Could be six. At least five, isn't it? So Scotty with two to come, though, and does yeah. have room to draw at least on a second shot, but... Yeah, I think second gotta, shot might not cut it. Yeah, correct. I think you've got to call this one in from Scotty here, uh, Sammy, just so we can. It's so important in the context of this game. Call us in. Oh, Scotty Lord of his ball is on its way in. Oh, it crashes into the front, and that's actually turned Joshie's Reddix bowl up. I think they're holding seven. Oh, I don't think they're holding. They could be holding seven. Anyways, we'll come back anyway, to this. Anyway, we'll come back to that because Sticks is up on the forehead here, Ooh. trying to land this bowl out. He likes it. Any sort of contact is good. Oh, Just good under. And actually clipped his own out there. So they are holding two now, MCC, and only one Valley Bowl in the head, so I think they might try and maybe add another one in there. I think Lynchy won't get too elaborate with his next shot. But I am keeping an eye out on that Nelson ring. So Kano's got to throw this one in first. There's his shot bowl, which is pretty much on top of the jack and everything else sort of two, three foot away. Is he through? He's through. It's eight. That's what I'm saying. Well, I don't know if it is. I reckon this back one here might be fifth or sixth yeah, shot, actually. People can't see that. So no, they sorry. That takes, yeah. They're holding eight. <laughs> no, no. Dave's oh, just Dave. put back one in, yeah. Yeah, okay. Saying that, Doesn't really it? matter what it is, mate. They've got to get a bare minimum second or third shot. Correct. Correct. Exactly right. And look, Scotty's obviously a class act, so he's he's going to cut this number down. Um, but he, he really needs to cut it down by a bit. Oh, no, he's just looking to... Turn their own bowl in there, it's just... A tick, isn't it? I mean, he's passed. He's got another one in there, hadn't he, Sammy? So That's yeah. right, yep. Tick. I imagine they'll slow down to see the result of Scott's rink. If Scott can, I guess, hold off and reduce the count while well, the game's still on, but I think if it's a number, yeah. I think they're probably going to just try and go for their rink. Maxie Goldsmith just has his foot stood at sort of jack high, but a foot wide, so that sort of tells you... Scotty doesn't have... Heaps of room to get the shot, but possibly to get second. They're interested. Well, he needs to hurry, Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Well, it's a big number for Moody Valley, and there's that's going to make it really hard now for MCC. There's four that's gone already. There's there's five that's about to go. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep you updated, because Ash Rowan's bowl is also on its way down. On the rink we can see here. You can see they're measuring just in the top right-hand corner of your screen. Ash just coming through. Boys next door have got the tape and are going around. Dale Jones also missing a drive, so it's another one down. Yeah, I reckon it might be a couple. Is it? Uh, boys on that. Dylan Fisher, Dale Jones rink. All right, Nathan. I think he's pretty content here just to try and draw this off as close as he can to yet. Nope, sorry. Forehand swinging. Nathan Lynch doesn't take a step back, mate. If he sees a chance to get a shot, he's going for it. Get after it. Jeez, this is a very tough shot. So there's five shots to Valley, and... Yeah, beats Truss's bowl, ends that out, and gets him another third shot. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough now, I think, Sammy, unfortunately. Yep. It's, it's a five to Nelson and a number, I think, to to snapper got a two so sorry a three snapper got so eight shots there going against mcc and they'll pick up a couple here but it's a damaging sequence for mcc as i think some of the supporters might be 
picking up their blankets and saying, that might yeah, be just sort of uh, <laughs> an understanding around the green that. It's looking more likely that Booty Valley going to kick off their Premier A debut in style. Ashram in the meantime, though, is going to try and add a third shot in. I think he has. Oh, oh it's had to fall I'll down the wave. He's oh, still up and has <laughs> fell out. A oh, couple. Hands in the air there from us saying, geez, what do I have to do here? Have a look at this. That should be going inside. That shouldn't be, Bowl shouldn't be doing that, Sammy. They should be flopping in. In all fairness, uh, on this rink, the, the MCC rink have done an outstanding job to keep it nice and tight. You know, I thought there was a section there in the game where it might actually blow out but they've been able to keep it into six it yeah, was that there was that run of sort of ten shots in three ends for the Valley Boys there it looked like they might really get away um, and since then yeah I would have thought say MCC have wrestled it back and probably outplayed them since that point absolutely I think you know going into three ends from where they were at that stage you know if you had said to me they would have been within six for three ends I'd say that's a great result Unfortunately, the rink next door just couldn't quite keep in with the standard of Sims and Nelson in the back. Trisha's last few wins, Sammy, I've been very impressed with. She started to put bowls into those really good areas. And whew, just misses the jack there, but another good home. Again from Riley, being pretty consistent throughout the night, I reckon Lloyd. He just had bowls in good positions, one in the area, and always sort of had one past the Jack more for the night. Yeah, probably been the difference in the rink is Moog Valley probably just covered each other a little bit better than MCC. Yeah, have. we talked about it just backing each other up a little bit more from the front end, and we talked about it early in the night. Winning sort of those positional battles and players just playing their role in the front end of Riley Jack, I feel like I've done that really, really well. Yeah. Simsy putting in another one there over there, so it's it starts to be a bit hard now. I think for MCC they've got to still keep battling this out as Super has done perfectly here. It's a great shot. They need to try and get as many rinks as possible if they're not going to get this overall. I can guarantee you they'll all count towards the end of the season that final ladder. There's going to be places on the ladder decided by it. Very few points, so every rink will count. Yeah, Jack drawing the shot there probably doesn't help. But I believe Sammy MCC didn't score any points last week against Melbourne. So yeah. dangerous position to only get two to nine if, they, if that's how it ends. Yeah, especially with Snapper's rink just hitting the front for yeah. oh, the first time in a little while there. I reckon Dale Jones has led throughout majority of the night. Correct, correct. From the start, when they picked up that five, I think they've yeah, they picked up a four the first end and 
Dilsring picked up a couple of multiples in a row, and then Dalsring picked up a six and have kicked on. Yep. Looking sharp here from Dave. That'll be it. This rink is certainly not over by any means. If they can pick up a two or a three, or even a one, to be honest, but if they can keep scoring, going into the final end, anything can happen when you're in striking distance and going for your rink win. Keeping an eye on the Fisher Rink, who are one shot up going into the last end. And uh, Brad Martin over there has played a, a ripping shot, so they're going okay. Ooh. A little bit of a jack movement, I think Ash said just then down the line there. Could be three or four to MC. So they've got a very nicely constructed head here. Yeah, sort of all of a sudden just a little cluster of bolts just yeah. in behind the jack here. If I can get the jack down the line. Pretty confident call here from Nath, just wanting... He backs himself, doesn't he, Nathan? I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way he plays, he just backs himself. Yep. They're How's he going? Has he moved the jack? Oh, he's got it all the way through. <laughs> That's got it all the way through. about exactly where Nath was standing as well, <laughs> in terms of weight from... Brad's bowl there. Changed it right up early on. Pretty much not all those that, good yeah, bowls. Not leaving that head the way it was. Yeah. That's a damaging shot. You know, I think Ash, he's, he's drawn these shots well out in the open, but still the, the, the damaging, the dam the dangers now of a number is pretty much gone. I think he can't draw, pick up more than a two, so... Just having a look over... And snap his rink. I think they're one down on oh. the head. Well, you're doing well. I have no idea where the jack is on either. We can't see them. The heads are so clustered that... Yeah. I do think they're one down. I think Brad Martin's got the shot. And I think that would make it all square. So Ash draws the shot here as he's done most of the night. Question of how good can it be? Hold on. Big weight from Snapper on the far rink. Big weight from Kane on the far ring. Next yeah, ring. Weight almost simultaneously. Bowls cleared out, but... So MCC still holding on both those rings? Well, it would have to be with both of them really not impacting. I think Scotty's got another bowl left as well. So he, okay. He, he got the shot back with the first, Scotty. Let's see what he can do with the second. Lynchy. Oh, I think this is nearly good enough. <laughs> Nathan Lynch. I tell you what, that little peel in, as we saw from the last end, Ash's bowl peeling out, that little turn around to, to lock that bowl in, massive. I think it might be a draw. Well, it actually, might be, it might be a MCC rink win over there. It was, 23-22. So, so far, the two rinks finished are both MCC wins. Seven ends to go. 14 shots. It's two shots and end. I don't know who's We've got the rule. gone from the one shot and end to the two shot and end rule. <laughs> I, don't know, I wish I knew what the rule was. 
And Mooney Valley going to pick up here, so yeah. that rule is going to have to change again, Lloyd. Daniel, oh, pardon me, Daniel Nichols just asking, what's this year's average age for Mooney Valley, we reckon, Lloyd? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, I got this. I'm just doing the quick maths here. Quick maths. Here, just hang on. She's got the calculator out for those at home. I'm, I'm going to go with, with reasonable certainty, although there is an outlier, unfortunately, for one of the Mooney Valley players. Oh, don't. Don't go there. <laughs> Are you Not saying anything. Just saying that I think it's 30. I think most of them are around... Nah, 30 is pretty fair. Yeah. Steve Adamo moves it from 27 to 30. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Very city over there. But he needs to be. Uh, he's, he's, the, he's the boss. He's the captain. That's right. So, a single to the Moody Valley crew. and well, Let's like just have a look at this graph here, if we can, Sammy, for a second, particularly on the stream rink. So, really since N10, where you spoke about them getting that run on, it's been very, very even, very, very tight, you know, and unfortunately those early, that middle patch there where they picked up a few shots from 7 to 10, that hasn't been able to be brought back, has We it? did say at the start of the night there might only be two or three ends where there's chances for multiples to happen. And the Valley boys cashed in that little two, three end period. And in the end, that's going to be the difference on this rink. And with the help of Kay Nelson next door, that's going to be the difference on the overall. So... Moody Valley Lloyd, they're going to go 2-0 to start their Premier A debut. They've had a win at home. They've had a win at away here at MCC. A tough place to come and win on a Friday night on the stream. They'll be feeling pretty happy about themselves, mate. Well, they'll be on top of the world, Sammy, and rightfully so. I mean, how, how far can the Mooney Valley crew ride this wave? They've gone from... Division 1 to beating Fitzroy last year. Now they've come into Premier Division, won the first two games. Is there anything this side cannot do, Sammy? And then, of course, the pressure now comes on MCC. You know, what, what is their response to first two losses? They're now playing an away game next week against, obviously, some good opposition. Uh... Altona, <laughs> Altona. Uh, he said about the fixture ready to go. <laughs> oh, he's good, Savvy. But I mean, you're looking at Disco and 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 Matty Elal, who've come into that lineup of superstars already. Yeah, Dmac as well. Dmac, of course, been there for so long, and uh, going over there at Altona is never easy. But I will tell you something, two zero down in a fourteen round season, it's even harder. Is it going to be a selection? Is it going to be changing something in the strategy? Is it going to be is it, is it going to be saying we're going okay? You know, let's just keep at it. Let's hold, hang in there. What's what's the response this week going to be from the MCC crew? Oh, that's unbelievable from Nathan Lewis on the ring next door. <laughs> well, we'll find out what the response will be, mate, because we're going to be at Altona Bowls Club next Friday night at seven o'clock for Turner against MCC. I'll tell you something, Sammy. I don't know what you're doing next Friday night. I don't know where you are, but if you're not watching the live stream next Friday to see the response of MCC backs against the wall, 2-0 down, where else would you be? Interesting little headset up here, Sammy, just before we still got this game to finish. Seven shots and two ends. Yep. Need to score, I would say, four at minimum on this end to be a chance. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's got to happen now. There is a chance, but there's also a big chance for Jack Thompson to turn his own ball on the way in, and he has. Oh, what a well, shot. That's brilliantly played. Jack says. Played the perfect way. <laughs> Not today, he says. Says maybe next week at Altona, but today, this night belongs to me and it belongs to Mooney Valley, who have been outstanding.
tell you what, this is a fair go to get the inside of both bowls here. Oh, he's flicked the shot ball to the jack and... Yeah, look, I guess that... Made that even more difficult. It's going to have to be four ripping shots from Dave and Ash to be a chance to get that four. Got to Graham Spencer. Thanks for tuning in, mate. <laughs> have a good sleep, Spence. <laughs> It's been good viewers across Facebook and YouTube tonight. Oh, it was a dummy. It was a big contest. Yep. Mooney Valley for the first time. We see them in Premier 8. Plenty of people keen to see what the response would be from MCC. And yep. It's been a good contest for the most part. Just a couple of numbers late on has puts the margin out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there was a moment there. I think we picked it as well when, when there was one shot in it where you just felt that was MCC's chance to really come back at Mooney Valley and, and have their chance of winning the game. But the class of Mooney Valley, you know, the really top players of Mooney Valley stopped that and were able to reset momentum their way. Just a bit too consistent as a whole 16. So obviously a couple of rigs there going down, but... It looked on paper the quality rink was... Kay Nelson was one they had to stop with Michael Sims coming in for his first game of the season playing three. Great and obviously, as we said, this rink here with a, coming off a big win last week and um, Nathan Lynch being one of the spearheads in mm. the Mooney Valley side from last season. They look the rinks that Probably as well, if we reflect on Keep it behind. MCC's last year's season, which I know it's a new season, it's a lot different, but the Mortimer rink, every wink was performing. So, you know, they're like they, Lynchy's probably that consistent rink for MCC. They've been able to get on top of the rink that's always performing, and they're now 10 shots up Stop with three to up. go. Yeah, good point. track here from Dave. Yeah, he's just playing a sort of trying to turn his own over. He's just on the high side for that, but six in behind, so it's thereabouts. Of course, plenty of more action tomorrow where round two continues across Premier A, some big contests. We see Deer Park away for the first time this season. Going to Yarra for Footscray. Oh, Nathan Lynch has got a piece of this jack and made. Oh. That one hurts. Nice a couple. That one hurts. Looks to put the rink win beyond doubt as well as the overall. So who have we got? So who's Deer Park? So Deer Park are off to Yarra Footscray tomorrow. How's your tip on that one, Sammy? Uh, I think I've gone Deer Park. It's hard to go past, but... Yeah. Yarra Footscray pushed Moody Valley last week, and who knows, that might be good form. You just don't know, Lloyd. Yeah, look, I must admit, I thought in. Yarra was my dark horse this season. I reckon they got a good line-up, so I wouldn't be... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go Yarra, Sammy. Plenty of recruits. As we see, Ash Rowan here looking to draw the shot on the backhand. He just needs a clear road here, Lloyd. Oh, he's done it. He's found the clear road. Oh, what a That's shot. Pretty good shot. <laughs> what a shot. What beautiful speed. Well, they were able to... Hypothetical. Nathan misses. That's draws. Rick's still alive. Yeah, he's played that perfectly. Look at that. Just finding the gap. There was only one gap to be found, and, and Ash Rowan found it with that draw shot. Oh, Vinnie McAway, of course. Yep, from uh, one of Yarraville's new recruits. Yep. He's a gun. Shout out to the V man. Alrighty. Nath looking to outdraw this. I 
think the speed's handy enough, is it? Or not quite enough to get there. Alright, we'll see if Ash can throw another one in here. Meanwhile, I'll have a quick another look at those games tomorrow. So Bundy as well, they're going to play host to Melbourne. Melbourne winning on the opening day at home against MCC. All rinks up. From what I was told, it was a complete performance from, from the Ds who clearly after last year are out to get back to the top of the Premier Division as they have been for so long. Yeah, and Bundy looking to... Is Jimmy getting a Continue game Continue on their good form. Nah, Jimmy's semi-retired, I semi believe. Has yeah. Ash been able to throw this one in? Yeah, oh, it wasn't far away. So a single there. 21-15. With one end to go. Seven shots. Uh, seven shots here. MC said, get them the rink win. It'd get them, <laughs> you know, it'd get them closer. Yeah, you never know. Never know. Talking about D Bunduras versus uh, versus Melbourne tomorrow, and Dean O'Neill's just snuck in here and said, "If you don't tip Dean O'Neill, then I'm gonna have words with you." So I'm going Bundy to win easy tomorrow, Dean. Don't worry. Mm, what have I done? I actually just told Sammy to stop watching porn on the laptop. Yeah, I've tipped Bundura there as well. So, Cor Corey Wedlock and Gary Kelly in for them tomorrow. And Clayton Altona as well is the final game. So, both sides without a win there. Someone will get on the board in season 23-24. Of course, as we've touched on throughout the night, all games are live scored end by end by the players themselves. So, wherever you're playing tomorrow, you're looking for a score from either Prem or Prem Reserve. Jump on and you'll be able to see them. Yeah, it's, it's. Uh, I mean, every round's just so exciting. I think the games tomorrow we're going to be super competitive. You know, they could go any way, and uh, thank goodness we've got the the bowls now up to just jump on and uh, see what's going on. Tris has finished off well. I thought she's come back towards the end there. Uh, played some really good ends to, to fight her way back into the game. And I said seven, well. Sammy. <laughs> I said seven. A little bit uh, just stumped here in the commentary box, but we're, we're, we're keen to see the seven. I think the game's gone, but I think... If there's any questions about the game, I think Kane Nelson just added another one over there to the, the scorecard. Well, here from Jack to put any sort of fight back away. It's still on oh, the seven. The other edge of the bowl and falls back. Ash had a bit of a jumper. He was calling that head. He said, "Hang on." Yeah, well wet. Hang on. Is he going to crash the bowl? Mm, so it was passed. Still in the game. They could afford to have one not in the count, so I'm, we're still all right for the seven. Still three to MCC, so if Dave can add another and make it four... I think we might see some big weight coming the other way. Yeah. 
Still not a breath of air. Still perfect lawn bowls conditions. Is there one more twist to this second round of pennant? He's close, Sammy. Sammy. Oh, he's just going to land one on top of it. That's four. That's four. And Lynchy saying, just land a bowl there with a little bit of weight. Doesn't matter, watch hand. It's just looking to see what was happening on the right next door with Kane Helson with one to come, but I think the Valley Boys are holding. Yeah, I think it's at just least one. Just in case MCC would hold a snack and number here. <laughs> Be interesting. That stick's done. He looks like he's under Sammy. If Dave can put a. Oh. No, I still think it's four. Could be. There's one thing about Dave, he's very reliable on the draw shot, so. It's still going to be a big ask. We know that these two guys from Mini Valley are very, very good. But if he puts a fifth one in there, oh, has he got the weight he needs to run? Uh, that's not going to count, so... Alternatively, if Sticks can get this jack movement to the right of screen, they also hold a, hold a good number. Yeah, I think Sticks likes this a lot. Really close. Yeah. <laughs> he's found it all, but he's got Finds rid of one. Gap. So right. alternatively, there's a huge number also to the right screen for the valley, <laughs> but they're also three down the head, so... It's going to go one or two ways. Well, look, I think they know... They, they, they're looking for six or seven here at MCC, so that's yep. what Ash is looking at. He's not going to fall over. He's not going to say, we're happy with a couple shots lost. He's saying, how am I going to win this rink? So, Sammy, you tell us how he's going to do it. Is he a chance? Mm -hmm. Only drawing two gets him five of the most. I'm thinking backhand. Try and either run through Dave's and follow. Yeah, tough shot. Doesn't have to go far, though. It is on. Or alternatively, get that just down lands. the line. Yeah. Sticks his last one, I guess, the second best. It's a fair go. It's going to drift all the way past. So, I have to get that jack almost going uh, sideways. He's got to get past Tristan's bowl as well for them to count, I think. So I'm thinking maybe the only option is to get the jack down the line and then follow on to the yellow and green of Riley's. However, I think at least you might just hit this. So that'll do it. That'll be impossible, I would say, to get seven, Sammy. Yep. I wonder if... It depends what it is. He... I think Ash is just going to try and draw a second here. Or unless he's going to go well, the kill. I was going to mention is he's going to go the kill, but... Yeah. Just having a look around at the... Scores I don't, I, behind him. I don't think he's got an option. I think he has to go the kill. If they, if they go down by seven shots, so what? They're down by six. You know, I think I think he's going to have to try and kill this and go again to try and steal the rink. It's a big ask, and probably people at home are saying it's bedtime, but I don't know. I think he's going to go the kill and say, let's just keep fighting our way through it. Is that... Uh, Chippies puts another super shot in next door. He's played superbly over the second half of this game, just looking over. Ever since he got that call out, I think. The power of the comment section. So he's going the kill. <laughs> he has got it, Sammy. We're not quite done yet. We're not quite done yet. 
you can get back on the couch and keep the live stream on because we're going for one more. <laughs> I'm glad you're enthusiastic about that. So is Brad. <laughs> oh, good hit. <laughs> I'm excited. Seven's on. I'm, you know, look, I know we were told we've got to be very impartial as commentators, but I tell you what, I'm going the seven. I'm, I'm all on for it. Do you reckon Tris might bring the mat all the way up and throw the jack towards the tee so they can't kill it? No, probably not. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to be the strategy. Not, I think in, it not might in be a bit of a middle. Not in the plans. See, we, could be, we could be here a while. If it's So, for the context of this game, Sam, they've got to get seven. Can you explain to me the strategy you would employ to get a seven-shot brick end? Well, they've just got to build the head up the best they can, and any, any ball sort of a foot in behind or around the track as well, they've just got to group them the best they can to build up their head. Um, I think that's going to be the best way to go about it. So essentially that first bowl dictates what happens now. So It does, so in the game, yep. straight away. So three, three foot or so passed. Correct. So Mooney Valley's aim is to make sure that the, there's no bowls that are landing together. In MCC, you've got to try and put as many bowls as they can around that first Doolan bowl. And that that's good for MCC, that last one just dropping a mat, mat length shortly. Tris, of course, a very, very experienced player. She'll know exactly what she needs to do in any situation. And on cue, she's played another great shot. I think she's saying add three feet, please. Rolly going here, clear the front. Still opportunities. I think she really wanted yep. three feet on that. So, yep. you know, I think Ash has said rightfully so, Super. Let's get me that jack in there. There's still a chance for the seven. Don't go home just yet. Don't flick off your screens just yet. Don't turn on the cricket just yet. Let's see. How this one plays out. Super's put it. It's a beautiful home. Perfect speed. <laughs> Should we see? Uh, that person quite didn't listen <laughs> to my request. Benny Winther could not care less. He's seen enough. He's got, no he's got a big game. He's got a big game tomorrow, so <laughs> he's getting his well earned rest. I think he needs to take home Dino too, to be honest with you. Yeah, Dino should have left about three hours ago. And Tomo says... Does superbly. Splits them all up the best he could. Still a chance because they only need to get seven or eight, so they just this ball has to be right in the right zone. Needs to really move the jack. Has he got enough of it? It's a good shot. They played a good end. Yeah, that's going to make it really difficult now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're sort of clutching a few straws here. I wonder if um, I wonder if they'll line up again now. Yeah, the I question is the time to go early. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, they've got to make a call here whether the seven's still on or whether they're just going to go the kill. I think Dave's saying no. If we trail the jack, 
all we have to do. Scotty Mortimer just drew a resting touch, by the way, on the next freak. Just quietly. They've pretty much got it covered. The only thing I can see is kind of where Lynch is standing type spot and hope that something goes through. I think it's I think it's time to kill again. <laughs> Which I don't think has a great percentage with that bow at the front, but it's still possible to get an edge with Jack. This bowl here from Sticks will pretty much put an end to the Change it all, Lloyd. Yeah. So that's the seven gone. And when Riley and Jack haven't been there for the shot over on the Jack, which has been very rare, Brad Gibson has come in and backed them up superbly. Yeah, I guess, you know, to kind of look at this game, Sammy, unless a miracle happens here at this stage, particularly now with that Jack kind of locking in there, how do you summarise this performance from Mooney Valley on this rink and, and in the game? I think we've said they've just been a little bit too consistent across the board tonight, Lloyd. There's been very few loose ends. More often, more bowls in the head at MCC than not. So I think it's reflected in the fact that MCC have been able to create a three on the 11th end. But apart from that, it's been ones and twos. So that's where the difference is lied, and that's going to be the difference in a lot of games we see throughout this year. It's a really strong point. I think um, what it seemed to be not only on this rink but across the board is every time MCC did make a push, as Sticks puts another good pole in the area there with no option now but to kill it, I would say, for Ash Rowan. But every time MCC had an answer... Or, or, or presented a challenge. It was the answer straight away from Mooney Valley. They couldn't really generate too much momentum or anything that was going to be impactful on the scoreboard. So, well, very classy performance here from Mooney Valley. They go into round three, two and zip. Probably a bit of pride as well for them being the only side that wasn't in the original Premier Division contingency. It would have been their aim to come out early in the season and say, just because we're from Division 1 doesn't mean we're not as good as you guys. Well, you questioned that at the start of the night as to whether... We'd see if that had any difficulty in that jump from Div 1 to Prem as Ashrong goes big, clears all the front pack out. Got to be a blocker, done it now. Oh, I can't see a number really developing anywhere, so that might be the option. How they go with that jump from Diff on to Prem, and I mean, it's been no worries really. It's just. Two pretty convincing wins. Done it now away from home as well against MCC. Quality outfit. Just missed the finals last year, and their teams just about remain the same, so that probably gives you a fair idea as to where they're at. Yep. That's the kicker, isn't it? I mean, I think probably round one at home, maybe you could say, OK, they're good. Are they going to be as good as the rest? But they come out here against MCC. Looks like they'll pick up three rinks, and you'd have to say, or two rinks, should I say, have to say they've kind of said to the competition, we're, we're here. Yep. We've arrived. All right, let's see if Ash is going to end this game for us every year or not. Could it be another dead end? It's on target. And we go again. Hope you haven't got a train ticket to book because we're going again for another... Attempt at the seven. And may I say, Dave Rose jump in the air there to avoid the jack was outstanding. 
You'll have to go a little bit higher with your brad there, otherwise you'd be in a bit of trouble. I think Sammy, ladies and gentlemen, is just standing here in disbelief at that. It was a good hit. It was a great hit. Keeps the overall alive. 12 and 2 ends. 12 and 2 ends. Okay. And, uh... Mm. Might be in a bit of trouble next door, though. Meds have to pick up four next door, and Michael Simpson's last ball is going to make that difficult, I would have thought, Lloyd. Yeah. But, not out of the realm. They've still got three bowls left, so... Tristan's got another good start. She's kind of nailing this length now. Yeah, good start up. Let's just give a late shout out if I can to Maddie Bailey from the Upway Tacoma Bowls yeah. Club, of course, who have their own little struggles up there with a few different weather occurrences and then a, obviously everyone's pretty familiar with what happened to, to them and a uh, bit of a scam so I hope they're going well and finding their feet. They're a good breed up there, Sammy, so they'll be right. Don't worry about that. Is there going to be something crazy happening here? Or will Mooney Valley have the answer like they've had for most of the life? Bobby walking up if Ashro and keeps killing heads. That's right, though, the overall still on, so as well as the rink, still plenty to play for, Lloyd, like we touched on. Yeah. Um, Send rink points will come into it by the end of the season. I can guarantee you somewhere along the line that will come into play. So, Well, you certainly don't throw them away, do you, if there's a chance? Correct. You've got to take it. Yep. I think... All I'm hearing from the next door rink is the most that Scotty Mortimer can make is two. So I think the overall board may officially be good night. Tell you what, though, Super's in a good area. It's three bowls in the zone. Could be on the seven. What a fire! <laughs> And so that's one to Mooney Valley on the Mortimer Nelson rink. So that is game over 24-12 to Mooney Valley. And at the end of the game, probably, uh, yeah, just they were so strong, weren't they, the Nelson rink over there, maintaining the lead. His first game wasn't as well for... Mooney Valley, or did he play last week? Uh, he played last week there. Rink actually went down by one. So oh, wow. that's Kano's first rink win. First rink win. In Premier 8. Yeah, look, I think at this stage now, uh, it's going to have to be another kill. Sorry for you, Sammy. Uh, I'm thinking there's not much else on. I think Dave's looking at it and he's saying, I can't see anything else here. I've got to go big. Unfortunately, the length that they're playing, or fortunately, if you look at it from an MCC perspective, is that they will kill. Yep. 
No, no, more than entitled to go after the two points here, mate. 100%. Appreciate the uh, people who have stuck with us. So we see Dave Haro going for the kill. Wish got. Got to clip this front one. It helps. Oh, it's out of the way now. You yep. can see the jack. So it'll be quite simple. There'll be three attempts at a dead end from MCC. And will Lynchy, I don't think it's in his blood, Sammy. Dare put Does a he blocker know in. how to play the blocker? I reckon he's more a chance of trailing this in Correct. behind the bowls to make it real difficult. Correct. So I don't think blockers in Lynch's vocabulary somehow. <laughs> I think he thinks trails Jackson make shots. I don't yep. know if he's a blocker type man, but we'll see what Sticks has to offer. He's looking good. Can he trail a jack? Oh, it's going to duck under, is it? Oh, it's a good shot. <laughs> it's a good shot. <laughs> see what Dave can do. Too far away these last. See how he goes here. Close to the front. Well, makes it even easier to kill. Now we're going to have a blocker. Nope. I think she oh, says draw another. Try and make, make, play a foot more and try that jack. I reckon Lynch is trying to get as much live stream action as he can. He says maybe that's what it is. He's saying, it's "Oh, we'll keep blockers." <laughs> it's definitely on a higher line than the last Sticks one. Sticks, he moved his jack around the corner or not? <laughs> no, he's going to fill the hole. Oh, I still think that's close enough to the jack. Any any oh, contact, you know, any contact that's going straight out. Yeah, to be honest, it's almost any contact with a lot of bowls there it could be going out. So uh, Ash has struck him pretty well. Uh, let's get the law book out and find out what the cut cutoff time is. <laughs> <laughs> what are we at? Eleven o'clock. <laughs> that's got it. No. Oh, it's got to clean. it out. So that's probably the best result for Mooney Valley because it now does expose the jack a little bit. It's now really just a bear jack. Yep. I'll say that I think if, honestly, if, if that bowl wasn't there, it probably gets the bear jack. So I think now we've got to see a, a blocker from Lynchy Dunn. <laughs> the Mooney Valley faithful of still in. The MCC faithful seem to have... Maybe disappeared inside out of the cold. Yep. It's Nathan Dunny has he moved his jack around the corner? No, he hasn't. No, he's on the high side. All right, well, here we go. All comes down to this. We, Again. Will we see one more end or not? Either way, it's going to be Moody Valley starting off the season undefeated here. Close. And it stayed in. It has stayed in. So that will be it. Ash gives a, a wry smile. He knew getting that bear jack like that. There's still a pile of Nathan's left to come here, so they are holding. Because yeah, I think Ash has went out of bounds as well. Ash has gone out of bounds, so Nathan has about, uh, well, half a green to draw a shot. Yeah, I think it's about five, to be honest. I think he has. Four, yeah. So they'll count them up. They'll add that to the board, and it'll be Moody Valley here who... Uh, consecutive wins, they go 2 0 to start off their Premier 8 debut. They've just been too consistent on the night, Lloyd. Yeah, look, it, it was a good game. You know, I think they got the jump early, Mooney Valley. Their front end really took, took control of the game, and then MCC did fight back like we knew they would, but it was probably just a little bit too late in the end, and the class of Mooney Valley as a unit just shone through. And I think nothing confirmed, but it looks like it may have been five there on the last end to Mooney Valley. Which means it'll be an 18-shot win. They'll win 86 to 68 here on a Friday night at MCC Bowls. Mooney Valley remain undefeated. MCC, they've got work to do in season 23-24. An extra will be next Friday night. will be at Altona as they play host to MCC. Once again, Moody Valley, the winners here. It was all brought to you by the Myama and Dandenong Bowls Clubs. We'll see you next Friday night.